What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Drinks with Johnny. Hey, it's our 200th episode. I guess that's supposed to mean something, but for us today, it means that we're hanging with friends. I've got uh, my good friend Bobby Shabinsky, Davey Oberlin from all the damn vampires on the show here today. Uh, guys, let's just start with what happened last week when you released uh, the ordinary synthwave version. Yeah. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's bring it all in here for, you know, some of the people at home, I know you guys, you like to watch this thinking you're gonna get some Avenged Sevenfold shit. Most of the time you don't, but today, there's a little bit of it. This Davey over here has uh, all the vampires, all the damn vampires, rather, and uh, he did a synthwave, uh, 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 you know, kind of cover of it, so why don't you tell me a little bit more about that and how it came to be? Yeah, well, uh, Matt and I were actually, we were cruising down PCH and he was showing me your new album before you guys had put it out, and uh, I was like, Dude, you know it would be really cool if like you threw me some stems and let me do something, you know, mess around with this, something synthy, a different version. And uh, so I just planted the seed and then you guys played in Vegas and you walked out to Kavinsky Night Call and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's like the synth wave seeds planted. I was stoked, you know? Yeah. And then uh, I think a few days later, Matt texted me. He's like, hey, you still want to do a synth wave version of one of the songs? And I was like, absolutely. So he let me pick. Uh, any track from the album and that one kind of I already could hear like you know the changes in melody the the original track is kind of it kind of just segues into an instrumental there's a little bit of the vocal then it goes through right. so I, my goal was to kind of piece it together as a more of a structured song format with repeating choruses and uh, yeah I'm, I'm really stoked on it I, I listen to it all the time and drive to it and uh, I was like dying to I, I didn't talk about it at all you know but I was like I wanted to tell people I did this with you guys and uh, yeah. yeah, here it is. It's it's live now and it's doing well. I gotta be honest though with you, Davey. I didn't know that this was happening until I saw the post last week. I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, this is cool. And then I looked at it, I was like, all the damn vamp, I know who that is. And then I, <laughs> so everyone knows Davey, uh, another tie to the Avenged Sevenfold Circle. Uh, I mean, he's been friends with us for a long time now. Uh, he did a, a little tour as my bass tech. Yeah. Uh, fuck, that was. What year was that shit? 2012, maybe? 14? Shit. Something like that. Was it on Hail to the King, or was it? Yeah, it was Hail to the King. That's right, that's You right. guys were doing the mobile video game, and I was helping with the doing the sound yeah, design. Sound design and on that, too. Yeah, so you've done a lot of stuff with us over the years, and uh, yeah. that's why it was like, I was like, I, how did I not hear about this yeah. until it came out? Well, I'm, I was super stoked. I immediately it's listened fire. to it the first time. And yeah, we'll get into some of the arrangements here in a second, but we got to bring our boy Bobby in. And explain what the fuck he's doing here and why he's why got his hands. Here, bro? He's got <laughs> his hands in everything. <laughs> so this is just one of one one of your many projects. What what exactly are you doing here with the uh, all the damn vampires? With, with Davey, uh, we started a new project called Love Gone. New That's like right. uh, EDM kind of project. We got you know a little goth house kind of feel to it, right? I guess is kind of kind of what fair. it is. Uh, you know, I just. It's like, dude, with Blackcraft and Smoke Blackcraft, you can only design a t-shirt so much and, you know, design smoke products so much, right? So when I went through this last relationship, it was like just the highest of highs and lowest of lows, right? Mm. And just, because my background is music, right? Like I played in bands forever and worked for bands forever. Um, and then when Blackcraft started in 2012, I kind of left playing in bands, you know? Like I was like, fuck, I just want to focus on Blackcraft and grow it because... At the time, when, we, when it launched, it needed all the attention, you know? So it was like, I can't live in vans and fucking run Blackcraft, you know? Right. Um, but music was such always such a great outlet for me and, and this past, you know, two years of just the most toxic fucking thing I've ever gone through in my life. I think, Johnny, you were there for me through it all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was just sorry, I just shook my head because I was like, man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hold the record for uh, the quickest. Uh, you're just a hopeless romantic, though, man. I don't know what the over, fuck over it the is. years of knowing you. You're just a hopeless romantic, <laughs> is that what it man. Is? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, I think you fit the bill for that. I fit the man. bill. Yeah. I, I feel like you know, but with this project, um, I just need somewhere to put everything, dude. I was right. like, the feelings I had, and just I don't know, man. Like I, you know, right now I'm like really Cali sober, really trying to like focus on my health and be better. And I hit Davy because I've always wanted to work with him because like all the damn vampire shit. He showed me all the damn vampire stuff before he ever dropped it, and I was like, bro. Right. Because this has been that's been a project for you for a while. Uh, yeah, right? it's yeah. been a minute. 2019, I think. Yeah, that was that's when the first stuff and came out. and you know I love house music. I love you know goth, like goth house kind of like industrial stuff toward a lot of industrial bands. Uh, even though we're not going, we're going more like I don't know what do you call, like. Uh, it's hard to ED. It's hard to explain. It's yeah. kind of fresh. You know, it's, it's, well, it's that's what you want. Man. I mean, that's, totally. That's, that's you don't want to be. I don't want to be pigeonholed. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. want to be like in the industrial or goth scene. It's you know we're a little bit of kind of everything. But uh, I caught him. 
I was like, dude, I have this concept. I have these ideas. Here's some songs I love, you know, like, what do you think? And he's like, dude, send me a track that like you really fuck with. Like send me some shit you really fuck with. And I remember I sent him uh, Tycho, super into Tycho, okay, yeah. super hard. And uh, he fucking turned a track around for me in like, I don't know, like two days. Yeah. I was like, bro, this is exactly the direction I wanted to go. This is yeah. it. Like, you know, and then we just kind of took it from there. And we launched this, what, four months ago now? Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been like three and a half, four months. We've been working on it. But when Bobby was telling me everything he was going through, I was like, bro, I just went through that literally, like, ruined my myself on tour, seeing, like, the most toxic chick. I had it all, like, all the material inside. So when he was explaining, like, the vision and what he wanted to do with it, I was like, I, I got you. Like, I already... And that's, that's obvious. I mean, that's self, pretty self-explanatory where the name of the project comes from then. That's where yeah, it comes yeah. from, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. You know, I, I just feel like even if, you know, even people that are in healthy relationships go through shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone yeah. can, everyone at some point can relate to this, you know? And, yeah, and yeah. I just want to, I don't know, man, Just a, it's just a really good, healthy outlet instead of, like, diving down a dark path. Because for me, you know me very well. Mm -hmm. You guys both know me very well. Like, I'm, you know, when I'm stuck on something, I'm stuck on something. So, you know, in these past two years of together breaking up and those breakups, those lows were so low... I would go down some dark paths, you know what I mean? Of just like fucking not working out, eating bad, drinking myself to fucking so easy, sleep. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Just, right. just trying to be healthy. So this is the creative outlet from it. And, and uh, it's been crazy, dude. We just lost, launched our first single uh, on February 16th, yeah. kind of around Congrats, Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I Thanks, saw man. that. That was, yeah. that, was, that, was really, that was a good drop. Everyone can see that. Uh, easy enough to follow that on Instagram yeah. and stuff. It's Love Gone Music on Instagram. Love Gone Music, too. The, uh, the project, the part that I found interesting, I talked to you on Super Bowl, because I saw him right after I yeah. saw the release. And I was like, so what, <laughs> what exactly is Bobby doing in this project? Because mm -hmm. I knew that you guys were working on it together. Yeah. And then I found it very interesting that there's that it, it's going to have more of a lifestyle brand to it, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very like it's a whole it's a whole lifestyle for sure. I think mm -hmm. you know because I, like I keep saying I love the EDM world, and I just feel like there there's definitely some artists that like Dead Mouse would be a great example who really knows how to fucking brand and do merchandise and create a lifestyle yeah. out of it. Marshmallow, there's obviously right. a lot, but there's also a lot that don't. You know, I think there's more that. Like rock bands, you guys have created a lifestyle, you know? Mm. And I feel like the EDM world, they don't really do that as much, you know? And, and yeah. I don't really know too many, I mean like Excision and those guys, but like who's really kind of like giving it that dark aesthetic, you know? Mm. Like that kind of, I don't know, it's, it's moody, you know? Right. It's, it's just a whole vibe to it. So from the songs to the lyrics to the visuals to the music video to the merch, you know? It's just a, it's just straight vibe. Yeah, it's kind of like, like uh, everything's very cinematic in my opinion. So, yeah. you know, being able to have the visual side of that and the sonic side, like in unison, you know, Bobby's like the best at what he does and he's got really good taste in music too. So that, that helps. And we kind of, we're, we're like in sync always with that. Yeah. So I'm able to, you know, get down with the recording programs and actually make that come to life. And then Bobby's able to be like, all right, like, you know, we need to do this and come up with a visual that matches that, you know? So it, it's not just, something to listen to it's something to kind of just experience like a lot of the music i think live people are going to be closing their eyes they're going to be high they're going to be drunk they're going to be sober and they're just yeah. going to be swaying to it you know and enjoying it and getting lost in it and that's kind of the goal because a lot of times when i'm creating music the reason i love synthwave is it's very visual so i like to think of movie scenes and settings and having pch right in our backyard is oh, yeah. awesome yeah you drive down that at night and listen to music to make your final mix and it just vibes. You know? I will say that was, uh, I was talking before you guys got here about the, the two projects and the, those specific vibes you're talking about. I'm glad you pointed out the PCH at night drive. PCH, yeah. PCH it just, it just sounds it's perfect. different, bro. Like, it just hits different. Yeah, like, yeah. like, but like the Barons, like the only time PCH is Baron for like a hot second, like for along sure. the for water, sure. you could see that. Yeah. You could definitely feel those vibes when you're listening to this. It's definitely like background. I mean, I love... I love the artwork to it too, man. It really lends Thanks, itself man. to that, Thank and you. I think that's really cool. You got you got some uh, some merch already dropped on that. Yeah, stuff? Yeah, we just dropped some merch. Uh, I mean, bro, low key, like Avenge plays a huge inspiration to me. You know, like even growing up, like you know this, right? It yeah, we huge, talked about it. Everyone, Bobby's been on the show. Uh, yeah, I've been two here. times, one alive, one just audio only. This is your this is actually this your is... first time where we're like doing the whole shindig though. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the only other time was whenever I brought Dennis Rodman to the, the park here. Yeah, that, 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 was, that wasn't an episode, though. That was a hang. That's when Matt almost blew up river. I took him yeah, with the fireworks, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 that, that, was, that was a different 4th of July. <laughs> Dude, I guess that it wasn't crazy. Matt that did it. It was one of our neighbors. So, like, years ago, like, when I first moved <laughs> into this neighborhood, it was, like, 
Fourth of July is huge here in Huntington Beach. You guys know that. Yeah. Everyone at home, we've talked about it before. You set it off, though. You got to, like... Yeah. Well, I just it's just, it's always been ingrained since I was a kid. Okay. I've lived here my whole life. It's always been massive. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah, so, like, when I first got the house here, and we were throwing parties, and July 4th was a big block party. Neighbor at the time, uh, was a fireman, was, had confiscated a bunch of fireworks and was launching them off. So then it invited other people to come to this park next door and launch them off. <laughs> Drinking was involved, and uh, one of the fireworks fell and went straight into the crowd of people. Um, oh, shit. Yeah. But that, was, that, that wasn't Matt, though. That was, well, he it was, was like his right kid, there. He Gary, uh, River's grandfather, grabbed him yeah. and, and took oh, him that's right. back. Yeah. You have a good memory, man. I, I just remember it just felt like Normandy. Everything yeah. was just shooting <laughs> past me. Dude, it's a war zone here. It's a total war zone here in Huntington, man. I yeah. remember, like, they took oh, away shoot. fireworks for a while. You guys remember that? They, uh, they, no. They weren't legal, so they just didn't have them. And then people were still launching them off, of, of course. Yeah, like, so they finally were like, all right, we're not keeping up with it anyway. And then I was living downtown, the fir- like one of the first years they had it, like right in the heart of downtown yeah. Huntington. And I went down, I was smoking at the time, so I went down to grab a pack of cigarettes from the local liquor store. And I remember just looking around and there was just smoke everywhere. I felt like I was in the middle of a riot scene. That's so funny. But like completely comfortable because it wasn't an actual riot. But yeah, it was yeah. like, I was like, this is gnarly. That's but so funny, bro. Yeah, my first 4th of July here was insane because I grew up in LA, so mm-hmm. you don't really have much of that. Um, not not as frequent. Like there's like big ones that get lit off here and there, but you yeah. know, downtown Huntington is insane. If you're trying to drive through, you you see fireworks <laughs> shooting everywhere, smoke, like, like, like people's kids on fire. Like it's, and that's it's at crazy. night during the day. They they keep it going with all the water balloons down there too. Yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah, what do you mean water balloons. They throw water balloons. Yeah, if yeah. you ride your bike around, uh, especially on a street called Alabama on Fourth of July, you you're known you're going to be nailed with water balloons. Or you're driving by the car, anything. When yeah. I lived down there, we had a water balloon launcher on the third story of the house that we were on. We were on the third story <laughs> deck, and we were launching them in every direction, gotcha. pissing everybody off. Yeah. But it was great. Love it. It's amazing. And that's living in Huntington for you. We were all like, <laughs> yeah. we're all around the corner from each other again. Yeah. You, you moved away for a while, but came back. Yeah. Went to East Coast and LA and fucking back to OC, you know? Yeah. Someone's always pulling me back. I, I love the vibe in LA right now. I feel like the energy's starting to come back, actually. I know Is everyone, it? Everyone's thinking I'm insane when I say that, but. I, <laughs> I think you're insane because I've never loved. It's, it's not that I dislike the vibe of LA. Yeah. It's getting around there, man. I, I just think I just like the chicks in LA, I'll be honest. Yeah. I'm just going to be brutally honest. Well, but. I've been married for a long time, <laughs> yeah. Bobby. You're out of the game. You're out of the game. So you're out of the game. I mean, but. I could still look, though. You know, you're out of the game, but. Yeah. Uh, chicks in LA are built different. I don't know what you it know is. You know what's funny though? They're all chicks from different states. They're just in, yeah. in LA. But that's, like, that's, that's where they that, go. That's what metropolitan yeah, cities are all about, man. I think I want to move back to LA. <laughs> <laughs> he just decided it right here today, tomorrow. Oh, shit, man. Those LA chicks go different. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to set up a studio up there. That's it. That's well, it. we got into a little bit of the projects. We'll come in. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up back with the with the with all the vampires and that uh, that synth edit that you did. We want to get a little deeper into that for some of the some of the people yeah. who, who know a little bit more about the musicality side of it. But I did mention, like, when you were out bass teching for me, I think when I started this project of Drinks with Johnny doing the show and the podcast, we talked several times about having you on. Yeah. And... For whatever, there was several different reasons why it didn't happen and blah, blah, blah. Now it seemed like the opportunity. We were always on like different tour schedules. So yeah. I, I actually met Korn uh, before joining them because I was on tour with you guys. That's so right. That, that's how the, we, yep. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that. how I met that's them. Sick. And then, and then uh, we talked about doing the show. I think there was an obstacle course you were talking about yeah. at the time. What was that idea? I forget what it was for. We were gonna, oh, that's right, because we were gonna do because you're we were gonna make it mostly about your bass teching and getting into corn through that because you did keyboards for corn for a while there, and uh, yeah, we were. I was gonna put you through like a drill camp, fucking thing at the <laughs> warehouse. What? Like do what? Yeah, I don't know. Just doing like redi- like shit that you wouldn't actually have to do as oh, as, yeah, a, as yeah. a tech, but like yeah. like one of those. You know, like the scene in Wayne's World when yeah. he's building uh, the Wayne stock and, yeah. and Chris Farley's got everyone, or uh, I forget who, who's actually, run, do you remember who's running it? But yeah. Chris Farley ends That's up uh, uh, doing a parody and going, I got no place else to go. <laughs> 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 I was going to get him to that point and then we were going to sit down and have a chat. But gotcha. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that, that never came to fruition. I, I've changed this, you know, the, 
ideology behind this show so many times over now that it's just like it's cool to see it man i no, think you're doing a great job with it, it looks thank great you. too thank you, know? you man yeah, yeah having fun with it um 200 episodes yeah 200 episodes wow. how many seasons yeah. well we stopped uh after last year's season five because now we're just going through okay that's another thing that we changed before we were always doing seasons yeah and that was to help us like get get some time off in between yeah. but we found that uh if we just with that time off in between for me personally i'd get a little rusty yeah and like, you know, I'd have to like remember how to have a conversation as stupid as that sounds. <laughs> no, but like, actually, it's like it's it's like the it's like the Dusa. flow, bro. It's, it's the, flow. the flow. You it's lose flow. a little bit of the yeah, rhythm, of and you lose a little bit of like. It's not just talking when you're hosting a show, as you know, you've for hosted sure. shows for before. Sure. For sure. It's also like being the as uh, D Larry David coined the the middle tabler. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah. 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 you got to be the guy that can keep the conversation yeah. Yeah. going. You got to be on. You know, yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. on, and it's. You, have you noticed, like, because I'm curious, like, because Blackcraft uh, podcast that we do, uh, kind of similar to format what you were doing, right? We were doing seasons, right? And we were kind of changing the seasons. So, like, one season would be, like, Fright Night. It would be, like, Horror Movie Review. Right. Next season would be, like, Unsigned Artists, right? Uh, do you feel, like, if you pause, like, for a season, a little break, how long do you take breaks for when you were doing uh, When we were taking breaks, it would be about three months, something like that. Okay. Do you feel like you lost momentum with it? Like, you know, is it hard yeah. to kind of jumpstart it again, right? Like yeah, definitely on the audio shit. side too. Um, yeah. You know, luckily with YouTube, uh, the algorithms and stuff like that will yeah. we'll keep, it doesn't have to be as relevant, I feel like. Whereas right. like the audio side, like if you, you want to keep it as relevant as possible. For sure. Because you have, you have weekly listeners rather than like just YouTube people that are like, you might have them that are subscribed to your show and they want to see it once a week, but then a lot of them are just passer buyers. They might still subscribe, but they're like, I'll catch it later yeah, down the line, yeah, yeah. you know? And it'll always show up on their algorithm, so it's, it's not a problem. Right. I feel like the, the podcasting audience is vastly different from the YouTube audience. Oh, it, There's a two, sure. different two different audiences. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like when, he first, when I first started, I, didn't, I, I just assumed anyone who liked the show would like both, the, both versions of it, whatever. Right. But that's just things you learn going along the, along the time and yeah. stuff. And I love how consistent you are, bro. It's like inspiring. You know? Thanks, man. Yeah. I, we try. I got, I got help. It's, not, it's, not, <laughs> it's funny, bro. Like people watching this and shit, like it's not easy. Like it, the content, you know, it's, it's not easy to keep, to, to be that consistent and be that on. Like it's a lot. It's a full-time gig and you're a full-time yeah. dad, full-time musician. Like you got a lot well, of shit. Well, luckily we take, we, we always have these conversations anytime we start to get a little too up our own asses about it, whether it's good up our ass or yeah. bad up our yeah, ass. Yeah. So we try and bring everybody back down and remember that this is all of our side projects. Each of each, each one of the three of us running this thing right yeah. now, Brandon and Sam, uh, we have full-time other jobs. So we just find time for this. And luckily, you know, now that the album's been out for a while, I've yeah. got more time to, to mess with stuff because I could still write and stuff, but we're not all getting together as often. Right. We have rehearsals and shows and stuff like that, and we're still working on extracurricular Avenged Sevenfold stuff. But as far as songwriting, it's more individual right now. Right. So it's like a little bit more time. Plus, I've learned so much more about this. It's another thing. When you stay consistent, you find what works and what doesn't for your flow. I'm not saying I know what works for views and fucking everything yeah, like no, that. I know what you mean. No one knows that but, shit. Yeah, no one knows. Uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you learn. That's the part that I really enjoyed about it. You know me. I, I like hobbies like this. Sure, you know, sure. I like to tinker with shit. Yeah. And like, I've... I've always dabbled in audio and video stuff, like never shown anybody anything. It's never been worth showing, right. but like it's something that I've always, I've always loved tinkering with and wanted to know more about. And now I feel like I have a good flow where I'm able to set all this stuff up, get it done and turn yeah. it around. I'm Love. even doing editing now on the video side, which yeah. is fucking brand new, but super fun. So oh, yeah. getting different shots and different angles from everybody. Shit, yeah. I feel like we're in like a big studio right now. Yeah. I don't know what camera to look at. Yeah, I'm not even so looking at a camera. I've just picked that uh, you guys audio mean, interface. Mean, mean, mainly ones? those two. Okay. And that I'm one's just looking at you the whole time. This one's just me the whole time. That's fine, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring up uh, that scene I was talking about? No. What scene? I'm I thought it, the the moment had passed. Yeah, I kind of oh, did. The but I mean, you could see you could see right up there, like like him him on his knees down. Oh there. yeah, I know so exactly good. what you're so talking good. about. Yeah, yeah, dude. Oh. Yeah, the, oh, it's the it's I remember now. It's the roadie that used to like the the guy from England. It's the roadie from England that uh, was like his story is that he was Lemmy's right hand man and all oh, that yeah, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, so good. Is the audio one? No. <laughs> Do you guys want to watch a video or you? I want to watch the movie. Eh, yeah, I guess it's not just showing the audio. There it is. Wayne, you will run the backstage <laughs> team. 
Yeah, this is kind of the inspiration Milton? to what I had for you. <laughs> You are the liaison between Wayne's backstage team and Garth's front stage team, which includes myself in the booth. To the left and the right of the stage are the machine gun nests, belt fed on 60 pounds. Now these babies tend to heat up. So you fast forward a little bit to like bit. show like there's a montage the there. Oh no no they got they they didn't oh, bring they it up on the radio too. but we all we all understand the scene yeah. everyone remembers the scene uh, yeah of course I mean it's, <laughs> it, that that was rough man like going from like you know playing on stage and then going to the tech side of it I I was not for me I was like you got to wake up early you got to be the last one in there all the dudes working in the background at that time were like miserable just old like old dudes smoking and pissed and. It, it just sucked, but I think you guys have the crew you have now is awesome. Like everybody's like yeah. fresh and like stoked. Like, but yeah, bro, it was it was dark sometimes out there. Oh, I know it. I mean, I mean, we had we had some guys that we that we loved for many years, and they were great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it takes a certain breed to be yeah. on that side of things. It totally. is. It's it's the hardest job out there. Yeah. You know, to be honest, like. Like what we're doing on stage is grueling. We're we're the ones running the show, making sure everything's done right. But it's the guys that are waking up, as you said, first ones in, last ones out of yeah. every day. Yeah. Crazy. And uh, that's that definitely takes it. So I know it did for you. I know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, how, I was how, like, even, how many months like, were you out with us? It wasn't the whole uh, cycle. We did was Europe. It? Um, we did U.S. We did. I know you did yeah, download. Europe. I remember that because I was trying to play so far away, and my bass kept going out. What was it? So far away. <laughs> Where Why was your bass going out? Download? Because he was my tech. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I mean, he took a chance on me. No, 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 no. It was good. No, it was, it, it, was, it was fun. I mean, we knew, obviously, being friends before, we knew that yeah. you had the acumen to do so. It was, yeah. Again, a lot of people might be looking at home and being like, man, I want to be on the road in some facet. The road's not for everybody in nah. anything. Like, nah. like, honestly, like... You, you can have, have that all dog the talent. Yeah, you gotta you have, have that dog yeah. in you, dude. You have all the talent in the world. You can have the the will, everything. Yeah. But it's, it's different when you're out there. It takes a different person. Just, yeah. That's yeah. just a forewarning. I'm not trying to poo-poo anybody's dreams. It's just you have to, you got to get out there and try it and see what it's like being out there first. Um, yeah. You got to have the right role, too, I think. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I tour fine, like playing for Corn, playing for Five Finger Death Punch. I'm on the, the bus. You know, I'm happy. Right. Nice hotels and go on stage and do, do what we do. But, the, you know to do the other side of that. It's which like is, a, which is actually a very interesting point too, because yeah. like even on this side, it's not for everybody. Like yeah. even on that side being, oh. you know, uh, doing keyboards for those two guys and as great of touring, that's the great side of touring, right? Yeah. That's still a lot. And yeah, it's a still lot a lot for people that they can't, they can't do. So yeah, it's sure. just, it's, it's a personality thing. You got to realize that it's more than just yourself too out there. You got to get along with a lot of other people. I think it's, it's almost like, 80 to 90 percent how well you do getting along with other people in small spaces and then 20 percent of that is actually when you're on stage doing the show you know and absolutely that's the easy part that's yeah. like what we came out for we, we work for like an hour and a half two hours sometimes and and then the rest is just surviving because you're bored a lot of the times so you got a lot of time to kill <laughs> i mean that's kind you know. of where the drinking really becomes <laughs> you know, nah. doing yeah. better with it guys don't worry um <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was out with you. I, I was out with you. You were doing good on a Monday. What's up? I was just out with you on the last run. You guys were for a couple of days. Yeah. You were doing good. You're fine. Yeah, that was great having you, guys, yeah. having you out in, the, in Nashville. Yeah, you were chilling. Oh, yeah. It was a great I time. wanted to go to that, but. That was fun, dude. Yeah. yeah. Nashville was fucking vibe. Yeah, Nashville is a great spot. A lot of friends. Uh, uh, yeah. Ray was out. Head yeah. was out. It was cool. It feels yeah. like fucking Head LA. It feels like you're like in LA, Loki. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Like all, like it's all like, industry people now, you know. It's crazy. All the industry Broadway. people are out there, but I prefer it out there. I just, Do you? Is it, I just don't like. I don't. I don't love the LA vibe. Sometimes it's great, but yeah. like, especially yeah. when it comes to schmoozing in LA, it's just not my scene. That's fair, Nothing yeah. against it. I mean, That's everyone fair. has That's their fair. thing, you know. But it's just not for me. All right. Shit. It's because you're married. No. <laughs> I've been going to LA before I was married. Let's <laughs> 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 be real. <laughs> <laughs> I've had great just, times in LA. Don't get me wrong. So different, man. I'm telling you. I used to go out all night in Hollywood, go to like the parties in the hills, and I'd come home and I'd be locked out of the house because all my friends were graduated. I was still a senior, and I was oh in high school. I'd yeah, come back home. I was getting invited to all like the music industry parties and stuff, and cool. you know, I remember even going to like the NRG parties with like Jimmy and uh, you know. I, th I think you might have been at that yeah. one. Yeah. And, me uh, and Jimmy, when we were living together, it would have been around the same time. Uh, we, we loved L.A. 
Yeah. At the time, because again, you heard it. He yeah. said it. You just I said he loves them. I did. <laughs> I, did. Yeah, I still love <laughs> the Lakers. Uh, no, but like. Me and Jimmy used to go up to LA quite a bit because we were living together and like, again, while we were home, yeah, that's it's all we did was hang out and laugh and drink and do whatever. So yeah. we're just like, let's go to the key club and go watch um, you know, Metal Shop and then see what happens afterwards. Oh, that's man, the best Metal nights. Shop, that was yeah. crazy. Those days were sick. Yeah. Go down to the Rainbow Room right after, so see sick. where that took you. And then that, that is the cool part about LA. Once yeah. you're like in that area, once yeah. you're there, that's what I'm saying. You circulate with that's and, what I'm you, saying. and you know where to go. Yeah. I guess. You just got to know how to move. Like, you just got to go to the right spots, you know? Yeah. I feel <laughs> yeah. Like. Now yeah. it's like, I mean, it's, it, you could still do that, but you're, like, constantly at risk of getting, like, shanked by, like, a transient or something. <laughs> like, it's, like, exposed to fentanyl. Well, that was know? always there. It's just gotten worse. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah, it's, like, just true. right. You go outside of Rainbow, it's right there on the yeah. side. Like, you used yeah. to have to go down to, like, Fountain. Or <laughs> but I feel like that's every major city, though. Oh, yeah, yeah right now, especially, especially after right now. And shit, after yeah. COVID, but, it, was, it was crazy getting back out there and yeah. seeing yeah. that. Just to be dead. honest. Because honestly, it, it had been so long since Avenged had toured in between yeah. that last time we were out there in 2018, everything was still flourishing in those yeah, months. Did you notice seasons. like a big difference when you were on the road? This last year when we went out on those two legs yeah. in America? Absolutely. I mean, I've said it here, like when I was out in Denver, I was I was blown away on yeah. like how, yeah. how different it was. Denver used to be like the cool, I personally, I, I thought like it felt like a... Uh, like a little colder version of Orange County in certain parts. It totally you know what I'm saying? Like, there it definitely has that. It. Yeah, it was, it was laid sure. back. There was more uh, of a laid back vibe to for, it. For sure. And mm -hmm. the last time I was there was, I mean, there's th th that downtown area that used to have like a bunch of nice restaurants yep. and like really cool. A lot cool of shit clothes and stuff, right? It's all gone. Everything's just skyscrapers yeah. and then the transients. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. That was one of the metropolitan cities that didn't have that, I felt like. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, a bad one was when we were in uh, Minneapolis. Oh, that show totally terrible. Really? So when we were there for the show, I was like, yeah, it looks like this, like the town's like filled up. It's pretty good. Next day, it was a ghost town. And we were talking to the guy at the hotel. He's like, oh, yeah, unless there's a concert or a sporting mm -hmm. event in town, everyone comes back in. But then they're gone immediately the next day again. And it just Crazy. goes to a ghost town. Yeah, that, my first tour back was with Five Finger, and I hadn't seen, we, we stopped at the beginning of the pandemic, but I remember we were playing somewhere with Breaking Benjamin, and we started hearing that the world was getting kind of crazy. And oh, you then, were out right in the middle of it, that's right. Yeah, we all had it, a lot of COVID on tour. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, hang on. It's a good thing you're still here, brother. Yeah, we had, uh, <laughs> we had the Velvet Hammer guys there, and, like Mark Wakefield didn't want to like touch anybody, he was wearing a mask, and we, oh, yeah. we didn't know what we had. Chino was back there with us, and we are all like talking about how we just couldn't get better. And uh, then, yeah, that was it. And then I was like, well, I wonder what tour is going to be like again. I haven't done it in a while, you know, so go out with Five Finger, and all the major cities were like, ghost towns like just boarded up windows um a lot of transients and just like even in like austin just people passed out in planters with their pants down while the cops are walking by nothing pretty nothing sad. to be done yeah, yeah. it's all sad man because it's it just is. it was just a fuck situation for everybody and not everyone was able to get out of it uh, yeah. you know in a, in a in a positive way which sucks and it, like and it makes sense everyone moved out of the out of the cities because there wasn't anything to do there like yeah. if there's not there's not business hopping in a metropolitan city. What are yeah. you there for? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So totally. The businesses are gone, you know, and everyone's working remotely like they were for a while. You, you move out to somewhere that makes sense for your families. Yeah, financially too. Financially, it's just, everything yeah. like that. So I'm yeah. seeing that a little bit in Pittsburgh too because I was just back seeing my daughter, you know? Oh, and like, yeah. Like, it's crazy, dude. Like, so many people, like, this area outside of Pittsburgh a little bit, it's called, like, South Point area, and it was, like, the trending spot. Like, business, everyone, like, big business. But it was, like, the new downtown kind of a little mm -hmm. bit for businesses. And I was just there because my daughter lives right there in that area. And, like, fucking everyone's gone. Like, I drive past these buildings, beautiful building. Like, what's, like, oh, my dad's like, no. Everyone's kind of just moved away and shit, you know? It's crazy. Or they work from yeah. home now, you know? Yeah, it's just, and I, I don't know if, I, I hope every, everything is coming <clears throat> back at some point just because I want the... I, I feel mean, like it is, built, bro. You built such a structure in these metro metropolitan cities yeah. for a reason. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. They've worked for so long for a reason. Yes, you know, global things changed and everything yeah. and definitely, you know, rocked that world for a while. But hopefully people can start going back there just because otherwise you get you got to build other locations for people to come together. That's yeah. the, like we were just talking about. We are making a joke about the, the beautiful women in these metropolitan <clears> cities because <throat> that's where they all gravitate. Right. Well, if you don't have a place for everyone to gravitate or globally, I mean, everyone's coming in 
we were talking about just other states. Yeah. People come in from across the world to go to LA for an opportunity. For sure, for you sure. Know, and New York and yeah. places like these, Pittsburgh even, you know? Yeah, you yeah. take away the beautiful women and the world goes to hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we can find them all on Instagram and we know yeah, that's true. That's true. that they look just like that in person. Yeah, constantly. <laughs> 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 Man, that's crazy talk. Yeah. Oh, but, shit. Dude, so... Let's get into a little bit of smoke craft too while I got you here. Let's do it, man. Because well, uh, since the last time you and I chatted, you yeah. said, I mean, well, the last time we chatted that, you know, yeah. we let everyone talk, you weren't doing this. In uh, fact, I didn't even know that you smoked very much at that oh time. Oh, man. I was smoking so much. And then I was on like a, I was on, I, you know me, dude. I go through yeah. weight. You just make fun of me before we start doing the shoes. Like, oh, you're not going <laughs> to fucking drink. You were making fun of me. I don't make fun of you. Uh, I go through waves, you know? Right. I go through waves of uh, drinking heavily, smoking heavily, and then I just try to clear it all out and be like, all right, I'm going on my sober kick, you know? Yeah, you got to have a, 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 yang, a yang to your yen. You got to have it. Um, but for me, uh, I got super into cannabis growing up. I, that's, you know, back, who knows what the fuck I was smoking in Pennsylvania, you know? <laughs> I don't even know what I was smoking. I mean, I know, I know that mine <laughs> was fucking smoking. The shit I was smoking here, at least I was in Southern California, you know yeah. what I mean? But even now, I'm like, now yeah. that I could go to dispensaries, God, right. we get all the Mexican thing. weed with all the shake. Like, oh, yeah, I, just, I, I fucking, yeah. when I was in, well, when I was in middle school, that was <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I, lo- I know my parents love hearing that on the show when I talk about my, 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 my real time starting with yeah. uh, booze and, and, and marijuana. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. <laughs> You're doing well. Um, but, for, but for me, with Smoke Blackcraft, it was like, uh, same thing, dude. It was like uh, when I started Blackcraft, right, in 2012, right. Um, I looked at, the, looked at the market, right, and I was touring in bands, playing in bands, and I was like, okay, there's nothing in this. I was the kid always wearing the Sabbath tees, the Avenged tees, the Slipknot tees, the Manson tees, whatever. Okay, well, what if I don't want to wear a band tee today? Like, what clothing brand speaks to me? Go to Hot Topic. There's no clothing brands, and it's just band tees again. And I'm mm-hmm. like, fucking hell. Okay. And shout out like Travis Barker and Famous well, yeah, and like they, that they, stuff. The Hot Topic for a while had those those quips on their shirts too about being gothic and stuff. Yeah, right? for sure. But it wasn't like, <laughs> but it wasn't like a, a lifestyle brand, you know. Yeah. And then I got, I loved what Travis Barker built with Famous, right? Yeah. And, and the uh, Atticus guys and all that shit. Oh, yeah. But I'm still like. Madden it's, Twins had, had a line in there too. Oh, uh, made? Uh, yeah, made, a made, right? Yeah. Sick as fuck. But it still didn't speak to me like mm-hmm. like a metal, like a Sabbath tea would, right? It's like right. famous isn't like a Sabbath tea. Um, so I was like, man, if I can just kind of create like a brand, right? Because there's no, because to me at that time, it, nothing existed like that, right? So fast forward 12 years later, I walk into smoke shops all the time, right? Or I go on weed maps and I order, you know, weed and stuff. And it's all hip hop driven. A lot of hip hop artists, you know, which I love. And I'm just like, okay, I'm like looking through it. I'm like, cool, Mike Tyson's got a brand, you know, fucking, which is literally the biggest brand in the world. Like he's killing it. Um, I'm like, there's nothing in this space for like rock or metal really. You know what I mean? Some people have tried it, but haven't really seen like anyone really grab. I mean, go into a smoke shop right now. You're going to walk in and see like a shitty truck stop, like Reaper guy, fucking ashtray. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like. There's, I don't know, it don't exist, so I just want to apply that lifestyle brand to the smoke industry for rock alternative, you know, metal, whatever you call it. I love that, too. So as I'm listening to you say that, I, I'm visualizing it. You're absolutely right. And the it other don't thing exist, is like, bro. And which no. is just so weird because it's it's not like metal and hard rock music has never smoked weed before. I mean, <laughs> like, it's the face of it, you know? Like, Black Sabbath literally has a song like, called Sweetie. Like, the 70s, yeah, yeah, in the 70s, yeah. that was the only people that, smoking weed. I mean, yeah. stoner, stoner rock, stoner, stoner metal, metal, right? Like, right. I mean, it's, a, it's a thing, so... Yeah. Um, we launched some gummies, got some disposables. We're getting really big into the cannabis space right now. That's we got the Delta smokeblackcraft.com. Uh, you can go on and we ship it straight to your door. Uh, just you know, a little which discreetly. if you're a fan of this podcast and listen to it, not, not just on the videos, you've probably heard a couple heard of the ads. Ad ad ran heard the ad. We're gonna run time. the ad again. We're yep. running. That, but we just got our website back, smokeblackcraft.com. Um, but yeah, man, I love it. You know, it keeps me off the liquor, which is good. You know, dude, isn't that like the thing though? Like, I know I'm having a beer right now, but like when I when I take time off of booze, which you guys know I do yeah, you pretty often. Do. Yeah, uh, I do go on the. I, I love that you called it the Cali diet because a lot of people don't understand yeah. that. But like yeah. the Cali diet for those of you at home, <laughs> may not be in California. <laughs> Uh, means you just get high and you don't have booze. Um, bro, it's great. Like last night, like so you know, much more productive. Bro, and and honestly, this project, like when we were working on Love Gone shit, like I get high as hell and we just go work on shit, you know? Yeah. Or like he all my get, best shit that I've done is fucking from weed. Bobby would get high. So if you're listening to this, dude, get high. <laughs> Smoke weed. Yeah. 
I give him contact high all the yeah. time. I'm like just trying to like just be there. Yeah, because you don't smoke, do you? No, I mean, yeah. I, occasionally sure you have. Yeah, I'll yeah. have a puff here and there, but you How know. How many times I get you high, bro, in the car and shit? I can't even count it. It's like every time we'll have like a meeting in LA or we'll go up for a dinner and I mean, I don't mind it. I enjoy the smell. <laughs> and I think that when I get contact high, I don't get anxiety. But anytime I've tried to just directly smoke, I've given myself so much anxiety. You gotta hook this guy up. He, he's still he's still working in, in, in the early 2000s in weed. I, I, I totally was the same <laughs> way. For, dude, I was the same way. I only make the joke because I was yeah. the same way. Like, I've said it many, many times. Like, through my 20s, I have the same thing. Paranoia, anxiety, really? everything like that. Yeah. I t- turned 32, and... At that point, dispensaries have been around for long this enough. Was last and year, stuff right? like that. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Literally, <laughs> this is why he gets to come back on the show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like just uh, being able to go to a dispensary and talking to enough people, you—it's just like wine. Like yeah. you find what you like, the yeah. the buzz and the taste. Mm-hmm. You can hone it in. For sure. And don't get me wrong. Take some time, and some of those times you are gonna get the strain that makes you a little anxious and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm then, just gonna stay away from the sativa, honestly, yeah. or the hybrids. Per- That's like not you, entirely hybrid true. actually is I, good I, for me. I, it's not entirely true. I agree yeah. with you. It's not entirely it's, true it's, because it's, it's a it's a personal preference. I believe. It is. Yeah. It is. But I, for me, this is personal preference. Right. But right, right. the sativa is gonna give you the upper. Right. It's gonna it's gonna lift you up a little bit. Where indica is gonna chill you out. So for me, like, don't get me wrong, though, Indica's fucking sent me. I mean, even my own gummies have fucking sent me. You know Dude. what I'm saying? Like, they're strong. It's, it's strong <laughs> shit, but it's all about dosage. And once well, you figure yeah. it out, you know you where you're at. You figure out your dosage. Yeah. Everything is actually measured out now and stuff. It's, not, sure. like, it's not like going to your college buddy's got a fucking, a fucking sheet of fucking yeah. brownies. Right. One of, them, one of them's got, like, <laughs> all the yeah, like 300 milligrams. The other one's like 10. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, dude, I feel like I'm gonna die. I only had like two bites. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. When I was when I was with you guys, when I came to Nashville with you, and then I rode up with you guys to uh, Louder Than Life yeah. at that Kentucky show, dude, I was walking through uh, the crowd. You guys were about to get ready to go on stage, and I was like, all right, I want to go watch. I want to go watch side stage, you know. And this dude, he's like, Bobby. He's like, I didn't know who this guy was, right? Oh, no, no idea who this guy is, right? <laughs> Sorry, already... And, you know, I'm fucking already on a little bit of a bender with you. I was drinking a little bit with you. So weed cures my hangover. It, it just Absolutely. It, it cures hangovers. That's another right? great thing about it, by the way. And, and, dude, like, I didn't have any weed on me, you know, because I was flying and I was in that. I was like, whatever. So this dude watched me. He's like, bro, he's like, I'm, I would love to smoke with you. And I was like, fuck it. I was like, I'll smoke with you, bro. 100% I smoked crack. Like, it, it was, bro, I was on side stage, bro, when you walked over, do you remember when you walked over? Yeah, to me you came over and said hi. Bro, you were like going like this. You were like, I was, I smoked crack. Awesome. I That's 100% amazing. smoked crack. That's yeah. rad, how did it feel? Fucking felt terrible. Uh, it, that's it, not the kind of feel good. We're trying oh. to get the kid. We're like, trying to get the youth. To I'm trying to get the kid. Don't do crack. <laughs> this is a great lesson. <laughs> but but bro, like we, on stage, you guys were. Like, it felt like we were on like the Titanic, bro. Like that's everything funny. was. Like, it might have been PCP. I might have smoked PCP. <laughs> honestly, hey, honestly, would do it again. Yeah. Would do it again. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Well, too, too, I mean, I will say, like, I, I do uh, have a better time with hybrid. Hybrid's, like, good for me. It's, yeah. Well, it see, me for normal. me, it's, like, I like the sativas uh, for the daytime, because then I do get shit done. Well, of I course. Guess, like, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. But see, my palms start sweating, bro. Maybe it's just too strong. You I can get the sad. sativa with a little bit lower percentage. You can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm saying this to a guy who just thinks he smoked PCP at my show. Yeah. yeah. 100% did. And would do it again. I was on camera. <laughs> Fuck, Fuck, man. man. No. Only with you, I swear. This Dude, shit happens. That was fun, though. Like, let's get back to that. Because you just reminded me again, like, when you guys came to Louder Than Life, too. Yeah, yeah. And we were on side stage. That was cool. It was like so sick, some dude. friends over there. It was like a whole crew over on Zach's side of the stage. So I made a point to come over and so say sick. hi to everybody. And, and then we had that compound afterward. So sick. Uh, Fred Minnick. Shout out to Fred oh, Minnick. Oh, yeah, Fred came Minnick, by, dude. Brought some hey, good whiskey. He, he's another dude who I want to shout out to. Like, I don't really know him that well, but because uh, when I was doing my Twitch show with Space Zebra and stuff, he right. kind of really started pushing his stuff, you know? And he, he kind of blew up, and, like, his passion for what he does is so cool. I love that. I don't really fuck with bourbons and shit like that, but or whatever fuck he does, but he's got a good thing going. It's good. whiskey in general. He's, he, he's, I mean, he's a good, he's cool, man. I, I met him it. through the podcast. One of those uh, things that, like, is cool about doing the show is meeting friends through it and yeah, stuff like for, that. for sure. And, um, and, yeah, he just, he turned me on to a bunch of different shit that I, like, because, you know. He had I everything backstage, bro. I drink anything. Anything yeah. that I think, it doesn't matter what uh, right. what liqueur it is. Uh, it's just, uh, or liquor, rather. Um, I just like it to be good. Yeah. And I'll find something. And he, like, 
I was always telling him before, I was like, yeah, I'm more of a scotch guy. And then he was like, I, I got some bourbons for you. And he turned me on some really That's good cool. ones. And then forever grateful on that. And I do the Ascot Awards. That is his thing every year. Oh, um, nice. Nice. He sends me a big box of samples of fucking whiskey. That's really why you do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you're going to send me a bunch of, bunch of whiskey and I'm not going to be a part of it? Yeah, yeah of course. You're stoked. You're stoked. Bro. Yeah, but Fred was there. Trey was there. I mean, all the, all the cool. everyone was there, as, as you know. It was super fun. Yeah. Those compounds, Danny, Danny puts it together well. Danny now. does a, uh, DWP does a great job at festivals. They are yeah. very fucking, they, they know how to run festivals, man. I'll give them that. Yeah, man. Sure. I mean, we've been doing, I mean, no offense, Danny, but we've been doing them since before he knew what he was doing with, the, with those festivals. <laughs> I mean, like, he always knew what he was doing, but I, I mean, like, now, mean. like... Now it's an experience. It really it's, is. It's, and, and, and and it's, they, it's always been good, but now right. he's made it great. And they treat the artists great, the, yeah. the compounds and uh, catering's fucking great. Uh, yeah, I like that, that Louder Than Life catering tent. It's, like, one of the longest ones of all oh, the dude, festivals. Oh, it's like, yeah. 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 I went in there at Louder yeah. Than Life, I was like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the weather's, like, always shit at that festival, but... I, I've always enjoyed still, like, you know. It's funny you say that. They would always say times. that in the past, like, I think two or three years, they've caught, like, the perfect weather for yeah. whatever reason. Like, that's, yeah, like, the Yeah, we had great weather. I was just saying, that's the one festival for him now. It's been, like, great. Like, like Welcome to Rockville was a shit show, dude. We were in the middle of the, the Blue Ridge, like, catastrophe. Oh, God. We had to drive. We stayed two hours <sighs> away. God, and you, we were, were, you were there for that. Yeah, we were headlining, I think, Thursday night, and they shuttled us over we take two hours to get there, and the second we're there, like hell's breaking loose. Like, we're, I, I'm I'm in a, a trailer with uh, Chris Kale, him and I. Hey, I and love Chris Kale. Yeah, Chris what is a great, great human. Dude. Dude. He's the best dude. And we're great like human. thinking about getting catering, and then all of a sudden, it just sounds like like a monsoon's coming or something, and it just starts coming down. So we still try to brave it, and then we see the one of the catering tents just go. <laughs> 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 like, all right, we're not, we're not eating playing. today. So. And we're not playing. Yeah. Right? Well, we that, you actually just brought me into another thing there that I completely forgot about, Davey, is when you were out with Five Finger Death, Death Munch, you did the Blue Ridge. Yeah. And then all these words came out about Blue Ridge afterward, like it was like a shit fucking show. Oh, yeah. Like de- just down to everything. The did way you go online and look at anything? Yeah, yeah. I, so that, sure where, else did I, where, where else would I get my information? <laughs> I yeah, guess I could call up a couple of people, but I didn't. I'm not a journalist, but I was just like, you're kind of a journalist. <laughs> well, I guess. Well, now I'm asking Davey. Hey, Davey, you were there. Yeah. What was it like, man? Like, like, because a lot of the stuff online when all that was coming out was that you know it was poorly put together. It was like you know it was being compared to some of those festivals that yeah. uh, the Island Festival, Fire. Fire, Fire Island, and shit like oh, that. Oh, okay. Fest. I feel like that's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. I, I'm honestly, just saying what I was shown online. Like, I, mean, I don't know. There were sandwiches it. for the crew that looked like a fucking really? piece of shit bologna sandwich, and that was yeah. what they were served that day. I mean, we only get to see what we get to see. You know, they, like, roll out the red carpet for us, and we go to our trailers and stuff, and that all seemed normal. That seemed was good. Was artist compound shit, like, good? Yeah, it was, it was nice. Yeah, yeah. They, they were, everything was ready for us the right way. Um, I, I feel like they just weren't prepared for that kind of weather. Maybe somebody was in denial or... Oh, it was the weather, okay. Well, yeah. are we talking about two different years then? Because no, no, this last was year, uh, last year was last the year. Last year, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, okay. I'm just like, making sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't putting I, on that hat. I can't yeah. speak to the the crew side of it or like what the audience went through. I didn't really get to see much, but I know a lot of people were upset. I had a couple friends that were going to come see us, and they were texting me, and they're like, "We can't get back in." They told us to leave. Now they're telling us to come back in. You know, I was like, "This just sounds like chaos." I'm I'm good. Like I think we're going to call it. And uh, we had to wait till like 10.30 to officially call it that we weren't going on. But Ivan was like, I'm, I'm not going up there and getting electrocuted or, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, that's, that's always a thing, too. Yeah. I mean, especially with those festivals or any shows, really. You got to remember that there's, uh, for people at home, they might think it's directly to the artists and stuff. And you said, well, you don't see any of that shit. Right? Yeah. It's, and then not only that, what's being told to the audience isn't always what we're hearing, you right. know, and... That's a good point. It's a lot of telephone game, bro. A lot of telephone game. A lot game. of telephone game. A lot of telephone game. And not only that, there's also the aspect of like, <clears throat> it's not up to the artist or the people running it a lot of times for uh, what's happening when you have elements like weather and stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's protocols that are in place to keep everyone well, then safe. Then it becomes a whole insurance thing, too. There's yeah. so much behind the scenes business it's, stuff yeah. that you that's don't where, see. That's where know? I was going. Yep. It becomes more more of that insurance it's all business liabilities, shit, yeah. everything. Everyone's yeah, got to check Yeah, who cancels? Who, who, if the, the venue cancels, the band's not liable. If the band cancels, then they're liable. It's like. And so you have to wait around to see who's, you know, you play a little game yeah. of chicken, who's going to yeah. cancel first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the telephone game's real. We, we did. Uh, the five game. Hell yeah, it's real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did uh, SoFi Stadium with Metallica. And That's right. an hour before the set, we found out Ivan wasn't going to be able to come and perform because he had COVID. 
So Zoltan asked if I could sing the rest of the set that I don't sing. So myself and Phil Labonte from All That Remains sang the whole set at SoFi Stadium. Hour before, 80,000 people, no heads yeah. up, just got up there and just winged <laughs> it, you know? But nobody was any the wiser. Like, I mean, I, I'm sure people would notice that Ivan wasn't there, but the right. show just went on like clockwork and who knows what, you know, information was spreading about that or what people thought was going on. But I, I, I mean, I'm sure unless you posted a direct announcement, Ivan's got COVID, he's not doing the show. There's going to be so many like rumors. Well, they, but even if he posted it, you that, still gonna, people still make shit up, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's the way of social media. It's actually comical. It's yeah. just, at this, as long as you look at it as entertainment. I'm, at this point, it's, it's, when, it's become it's you, comical. Yeah, well, yeah. If, as, if you take it into real world and yeah. like say, that, like, I know because I saw it on social media, then yeah. come on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> come on. Unless you hear, unless you hear with like AI videos now, Sora from OpenAI is insane. Like oh, yeah. you, you can't even yeah. tell the difference now. Crazy. Right. It's it's gonna get wild. Like you're gonna see people going to court over videos that weren't actually. I them. can't wait to use that as an excuse. Yeah, that was AI. <laughs> I was in, it was totally dark. I didn't kick that stroller over at Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I was thinking of other things, but I mean, I, I often, I don't often go around kicking babies. So. Yeah, <laughs> Shit, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, you brought up another thing there, Davey. Like, uh, Five Finger just did, uh, I mean, last summer just did the whole run with uh, Metallica. Yeah, yeah. Something we also share in common. We've done one of those as well. Yeah. And this time around, being able to do SoFi, which is newly opened in 2020, is right? That's when it opened? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 2020. Really soon. so. That, that was a trip because I, I always thought it was cool that I played the forum, which was right there when I was with Korn. And then I, I looked across, I could see the forum and I'm going to SoFi to play that. And like Taylor Swift had just played it. I was like, this is kind of cool. Like just little yeah. things on your belt. You'll play like Europe festivals will be like 200, 300,000 people. And that's, that's crazy. But like somewhere that's hard to get into that not a lot of artists will get to play, like always feels really cool, no matter how big the capacity is or whatever oh yeah i mean that that stadium's fucking gorgeous i've only been yeah. there and you know to watch shit i've never to been see there. the raiders lose <laughs> you go there you, you want fight you go there and watch the raiders get beat by the chargers uh yeah because that happens all the time I mean, what happened last what happened last season I mean, they both fucking sucked is what happened yeah but i mean there was there was a game i'm trying to remember the chargers beat them Steelers yeah. beat the Raiders. So far, I remember that. Yeah. I went to that game. And Steelers then what happened, though, in Vegas? What happened in Vegas towards the end of the season? I don't know. Was uh, it a blowout? They, I think they dropped, out. like, 63 points on the Chargers. Is that what happened? Yeah. My boy wasn't playing, so who cares? <laughs> Mike's hurt. Yeah, he was hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Mike stays healthy, bro. They, they're yeah. going to be dangerous. I know you got love from Mike. I, I met yeah. Mike a few times, too. I got yeah. love from Mike, too. But he I, come on the show. I would love to have yeah, Mike, Mike anytime. He has an open invitation anytime. Right. I just play Call of Duty with him sometimes. Yeah. Beast. He's a beast. Mike Williams, who we talking about, wide receiver. Great yeah. wide receiver for the Chargers. I admit talent. I just I, I hate when, when Chargers fans bloviate about how good they're going to be every fucking year. It's fucking, that's every it's fucking annoying. NFL team. Nah, I, the Raiders don't do that. Everyone says the Raiders do it. We're very well, You guys real. are the most toxic fan base out. No, we are not. Raiders are the most toxic fan no. base. So it's so untrue. So I always feel like played like it's a stigma. Toxic. I, I disagree with it. Toxic, bro. I feel like Raiders fans and Slayer fans are the same audience. Like <laughs> since I was a kid, I'm a Steelers <laughs> fan, so I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, what, what, what do you care? <laughs> We're toxic. <laughs> Steelers are toxic as fuck too. Steelers I don't, have I, good see, merch. but I don't find the Raiders to be toxic. I get that. I'm Everyone says that. It's just because they're hating. It, it's just for we me. have a lot of pride, but we're also not the same ones. About watch next year, we're gonna be the Super Bowl. That's Chargers fans. Every year, I keep hearing the same thing since they got Justin. That's every fucking team, bro. I'm no, telling you, it I, is, bro. I have never once said the Raiders are going to the Super Bowl based on something I saw in the off season. That's fair. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> but you're one of like how many? All the Raiders fans I know. Raider Nation, dude. Raider Nation. Doesn't matter. All right. Point is, we All got right. AP. Sorry. I'm excited about that. Okay. Excited we got we got a head coach now. All right. Great. Anyways. Great. What the fuck were we talking about? <laughs> oh, you're, leave, you're leaving for tour. Fucking. I don't know. We're talking about fucking Davey playing oh, yeah. with Five Finger Death Punch on oh, tour. How the fuck did we get to, to that? Metallica. Because we're talking we're about We're playing all these sports oh, yeah. stadiums. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. all the sports stadiums, hand in which hand. is awesome. We did just, and we were talking about Super Bowl a second ago, yeah. too. The that Dallas Stadium, I think, is the nicest one of all the stadiums we played. Think so? Yeah, that was my favorite one. Yeah. I remember Dallas being really cool. What was the dressing rooms like there? Because I, I remember the Dallas. I did, we didn't play so far on that toy. So I think we had the uh, the cheerleaders dressing rooms for that nice. one. Like 
Why do you think that? Because, because they had to have makeup. a different smell? They had the makeup mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> no, they had the, the makeup mirrors with the lights. And that was okay. crazy. I had to assume that's where the cheerleaders go. But <laughs> That might just be Hollywood, man. This is what be. they got to have everywhere. Yeah, you know? that's true. I mean, they have those all in the forum. Like, every dressing room in the forum yeah. has that shit. The forum, the forum has, like, the best catering I of love, all. I love the forum. It's amazing. That was so much fun to play there. But. Yeah. Uh, did you guys have uh, much interaction with the guys in Metallica on that tour? Because you guys did the whole summer, right? Um, we, they did something really cool for us. Our first show on with them, they reserved a restaurant in New York privately, and we all had this big like communal dinner together and just chatted. I've known Robert forever because him and I did all South America together with Corn. His oh, son, yeah, yeah. yeah, his son filled in for Fieldy, so Robert came out. Um, so we we did as much as we could there. We couldn't really go out much. There was some like crazy like kidnapping threat or something. So we had like you can't go out in South America anytime. Yeah. I feel like dude. Every time I've been there, it's like it's like you know you gotta stay in your hotel. I'm like yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> we, we were just being stopped the whole time. We had like paramilitary yeah. guys with us, but Robert took us out to a rooftop dinner in Argentina for sushi. Sick. And it was amazing. Like the, the whole thing was closed for us. And, um, and they did the same thing in New York for Yeah, exactly. Sick. So, so was we just got you to, and the Five Finger guys or was it everybody from the tour? Uh, Einstein Kills guys were there as okay, well. Cool. And, Love and those dudes as well. Shout out to Spencer. Yeah, Spencer's yeah 10th us. Street Management guys. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was like a, just a really classy experience. And like the food was great. And, uh, you know, got to catch up with Robert and meet Lars and... Uh, didn't really uh, talk to James until like the next day, but we came into our dressing room. Uh, I, I forgot what city we were playing. Maybe it was Jersey or something. And uh, he was in the dressing room and just chilling. And we rapped with him for a little bit. He has cigars going. And yeah, so really, really nice guys. Like I, I feel like the whole the whole camp behind Metallica is like this big legacy thing. So everything's done with like a prestige. You know, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it just feels really cool. The catering is on point. That's mm -hmm. always a big deal to be as the catering. Like, yeah, you mentioned you know. catering a few yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was picking up on it, too. Like, a lot of <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, like you can... You have so many allergies. And yeah, I have a food uh, allergies. You want a drink? Yeah, please. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> nice. Catering will get there. Catering got me going. I'm thinking yeah. I want to fuck another beer. It's going to yeah, be one of these episodes. You know, yeah. like, I, I judge a Mexican restaurant by how good the salsa is. And, okay. and I judge, you, like, sir. festivals and tours by, like, how good the catering is sometimes, you know? That's so it's, funny. It's a, a sign of, like, the entire budget and cares <laughs> in, in general. <laughs> like, I would agree. I would agree that it does, it does show, uh, you know, as an artist, as we were talking about, the difference between... The audience experience and the artist experience on these festivals or bigger shows, rather. I mean, even you're talking stadiums. It's still you got how many fucking people just to open up that place. It might as well be a festival, right? right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I mean, the experience we've had in Metallica too. Similar. I think the first time in Mexico, well, Europe, they they were super fucking like bringing us into everything, the dinners and stuff. They've yeah. been doing those for a while. I think that's something they learned. Over the years, you know, like that, taking care of the the bands that they're bringing out and stuff. Awesome. So cool. Learned yeah. so much from those guys because yeah. they are at the heart of everything, just really good people too. And mm -hmm. they run, you know, you could aspire to run a business like they do. Yeah. You know, they, oh, they for sure. Really I agree. Well. And they actually practice together still at this point. Like, Yeah, they have the jam rooms, man. Yeah. That's, that's huge because I feel like you can't you can't get a lot of bands together like i mean to get all of corn together was like it seemed impossible well you guys you guys all lived in different states yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah nashville i mean bakersfield might as well be a different state yeah like. <laughs> jd <laughs> i just spilt on that one all right mm. what you just hears me right that's uh drinks with johnny ipa oh nice yeah I'd I offer you one, but well, do you remember? Bitch. Do you remember? I um, miss IPA. I, I, lo I love I love the time that I bring you on my show when we were doing the Twitch show. Yeah, and you show up and you and I was like, bro, yeah, that was great. You didn't bring any beer or anything because you just dropped the beer, and I was like so excited to try it. He's like, what do you mean? And he had this coat on, dude, and he had all these beers, like, and all these... Bro, you kept pulling them out. Like, it was like fucking. Well, it was like a magic show, dude. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I like fucking, it. I, I love, I, you know, I did love being on that show too. It was really cool with you and, that you shit know, was Wes. Fun. That shit was fun. Yeah, Wes is great, dude. Yeah. It's cool to see Limp Biscuit back too. Yeah, man. It's cool. I mean, they're killing it, man. Fucking, fucking awesome. Sam can you attest. He, he went and saw him when we did, uh, uh, what's the one in Aftershock. Second Aftershock, yeah. Oh, yeah, dope. It was a vibe. Oh, dude, I fucking, I tried to be a young kid and I got in the pit. Yeah. I fucking collapsed. 
That's so funny. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, he told the whole story. It was fucking fantastic. That's amazing. Because yeah. he, he just he just made himself sound so fucking old. It was, it <laughs> How was old so are you? Good. Forty-two. I'm old. Oh, bro, it's not that old. No, it's not. But the way he just didn't prepare anything. He he dehydrated himself like every, mm. everybody else mm. out there and thought he could pull something off. Mm. Yeah. I had a good time. <laughs> but I see they're touring with uh, Corey Feldman. They got a. I was, I was just gonna say yeah. that. That's an I interesting cool. tour. I just met Corey Feldman like, for like the second time, like a few weeks ago at a. At What's a he like? And he's great, man. He's he's a super nice guy. I met him a long time ago at Skrillex's birthday. I think they they invited him because they look similar, so they thought it'd be funny or something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, yeah, they really do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that was like a Skrillex birthday. Like, this weird stuff would happen. How did you just, befriend Skrillex? I, I, uh, I met him when he was in first to last on, on Warp Tour oh, years yeah. ago. I've known Sonny forever, but his his manager, Tim Smith, used to manage me in my uh, black metal band, Dawn of Ashes. Oh, but, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, yeah, but he was at the uh, this convention I was at that some friends were had a booth at and uh i wanted to tell him like hey i have a whole synthwave project named after a line from one of your movies but uh, we just we just talked for a little bit i didn't want to be a punisher but yeah he's he's doing the limp biscuit thing which is crazy i think that's like probably the biggest riff raffs on it i think yeah. too riff raff yeah oh yeah. i have a crazy <laughs> riff raff story <laughs> I let's got, go so riff raff posted like who's the best synthwave producers in la and all these people were replying like oh davy all the damn vampires and so his manager hits me up at like 9 p.m at night and is like hey Riffs in town, like, can you play them some some beats? They they always call it beats, even though they're full songs. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, I was like, well, I was like, yeah, let me. I'm in Orange County. Let me see if I can set something up in L.A. So I, I hit up my buddy Morgoth Beats, and he does like, um, you know, like uh, all the SoundCloud rappers, Lil Xan, everybody. You know, he's always doing sessions, and he does a lot with metal, like of Sulfur and. Um, so anyways, I hit him up and I was like, Hey man, I was like, is it cool if we come up to your studio riffraff and you know, his manager and, and just do some stuff. Cause he's always down for these like last minute adventures. And he was like, yeah, sure. Come up. So I get up there. Riffraff's like three hours late. He shows up with like 16 people <laughs> and, and we come in and Michael's studio is like a home studio too. So I'm like, Oh my God, I'm yeah. such a dick. Like I just blew up his spot. But, uh, yeah, we sat there and just listened through like, I don't know, 16, 17 tracks I have that aren't released. And, and um, he's actually was doing some like cool kind of like weird mod, like Morrissey, Gus Dapperton type stuff. And I was, I was surprised. So he hears one he likes and he's like, I want to lay something down. So he goes into the vocal booth and I, I hit record. He comes out and I'm about to play it and he goes, no, 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 don't, don't play that out loud. Just wait till you get home. And I was like, what? <laughs> all right, so wrap it up. And then that, that was the whole night. That was like my entire experience. We exchanged like maybe five words and you know, I talked more with his manager. So we, he's a cool guy, you know, obviously, but like, it, it was just wild. It was so random and somehow it all, all worked out. I have the track somewhere. I need to like mix it and actually send it out. Yeah. Drop it. <laughs> just drop it. Absolutely. Yeah. Just drop it right here on the episode. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> World premiere. Yeah. Drinks with Johnny label coming soon. Just letting everybody know. No. That's right. <laughs> That'd be good I should do a label. Why the fuck wouldn't I? Because there's so much money in labels these days. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> fuck labels. Do it all yourself, guys. Just do it all yourself. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything anymore. That's um, true. But yeah, dude, that's that's incredible. Like, yes, yeah, so. all, all it's so funny. I always forget until like we're sitting here having this conversation. How many people? You, how many people you've worked with? Yeah, and and like <laughs> been on tour with and done everything. And I'm like, oh yeah, Davey's been doing some shit in the last several years. Like, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I stay busy. <laughs> yeah, I try to at least, but I, I mean, kind of just like like pick and choose. Like, I want to work with good people, you know, and and do stuff with my friends especially so like doing a project with Bobby was huge doing a, a track with you guys that was like those are like my bucket list items do cool shit with my friends like you know more so than anything so yeah yeah I just remember on uh when you were bass second with us and being out like uh you and Brian really good guitar players obviously and Thanks. that was when Brian was really getting into gypsy jazz yeah so you guys would have your acoustic guitars out on the bus or the hotel room, wherever we were hanging out. Yeah. Like we'd all start drinking when we were all together, <laughs> and it would be like Davey and Sin over in the corner doing gypsy jazz, where we're all just getting to listen to them, just and then every once in a while giving a request. My request was always I wanted to hear the Harlem Globetrotters in... <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, the old, the old song, ba-do-do-do. 
I always wanted to hear that in Gypsy Jazz style on the acoustic guitar. They always would oblige. It was fantastic. That's crazy. I totally forgot about that. I remember. I remember we were sitting outside. I think in like Europe at some festival that you guys played with Ozzy and and he was back there and they were lighting off fireworks and we were playing gypsy jazz and I think a little bit of weed was being passed around. It was like you said Europe. Yeah. Was that Ozzy or was that Black Sabbath? Oh, that was Black Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was the Black Sabbath. They they were doing like their the, uh, part of their final stuff that's while fire. we were around in in the summertime as well. Damn, you guys yeah. played with them on that? Yeah, wow. well, we were on a different stage as I remember. Yeah, we closed out like one of the second stages, and then we raced over to catch as much of a. a the, it was the original lineup. Too. That's crazy. So it was like it was fucking yeah. insane. That was, was cool. a cool night. There was like some magic in the air that. It night. was like Nova Rock or something like that. I feel like it was Probably. one of those guys. All those festivals. Do you remember the the Metallica show uh, when the the storm started breaking and there was like pink lightning and the video tent on the stage got blown off into the crowd. <laughs> Water was coming up in the back area, like the green rooms were flooding. Was that in the States or is that over? That was Europe. Uh, I think was it was Europe? like Sweden or Switzerland or something. Nah, I wish I could remember that. Yeah, no. Yeah, that, um, I, I'll never forget that because it just came out of nowhere and then all of a sudden we're in like two feet of water in the backstage. Like, and we didn't think Metallica would go on because the video tent practically crushed everybody in the front row. And then they still yeah. ended up doing the show like 20 minutes late. It was crazy. I'm trying to remember that because that seems like I, I would remember fucking two feet of fucking water. I'm like, yeah, yeah. What the fuck was I doing? <laughs> smoking, smoking PCP. <laughs> <laughs> smoking PCP and catering, dude. Uh, <laughs> can't wait till my son's old enough to watch my catalog of drinks with Johnny. Right? Oh, man, but, we yeah. had some good times, man. We had some crazy dude, adventures. There was there was a lot of great times. I, I did I did enjoy you being around and having you as as a tech. I did I do miss but, that, but yeah. I'm, I'm, that, that was fun. If I could have just done the, the, the set, like just been up there for the show, yeah. <laughs> perfect world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I a remember. lot of people to get along with back there, man. A lot of guys who have been around for a long time, too, you know? Like, I think it's a change of the guard, though, too. You know, yeah. like each time, like we see it generationally. You're, you're a father, too. Mm-hmm. All we're really trying to do is stop some certain cycles from the generations before, for you sure. know? For sure. And that's not only, I, I find it anyway to not only be in like business and stuff like that. I think it's society, like just it's life, morally, it's just it's, life. You want to cut out as many yeah. mistakes as you can and, sure. as you're the next generation. And you know, there's a, there was definitely, again, as you said before, there's a separation between the artists and the text too. And yeah. like, there's a lot of like, I don't see everything that was going on on the bus. I know, I, chir- I hear chirpings and stuff like that, you know, and I just go, you know, Usually, you take it to the production manager and say, that's your job to handle, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, like, back in the day, it was, you know, you always go through a bunch of different texts trying to find the right mesh. It's not about the talent, per se, of what of who can get it done. It's you got to get the team together that enjoy being around each other. Yeah. Because otherwise, you, you're, you're fighting an uphill battle. Yeah. yeah. You got guys out there just upset with each other. They're not going to help each other out. They're not going to do anything extra than what their job is. They're just like, that's your fucking shit. Deal, deal yeah. with it. You, you know? guys had, I forgot what they called them. I think it was like Legion of Doom or something like that. It was like these <laughs> these four techs that were just dicks. And they, I, I remember. <laughs> they were just old school. I don't want to call them dicks because I still like these well, guys. I say as people, as people. This is just coming from me. This isn't Johnny's opinion, but I, I, I caught one of them sabotaging my stuff. And that's, that's, and I almost got in a fight and Big T stopped me. I was yeah. about to go crazy. And, uh, but I, I just remember like telling my band, we, we were going to do a tour with Dimu Borgare right when I got home, like van and trailer, you know, three months. And they were like, wait, you're going to go tech? I was like, yeah, <laughs> like, I'm going to go try techie. They're like, well, all right. But I just remember just going out there. I'm like, fuck, man, this is this is brutal. And then we did the the tour with Dimu and tried to keep up with the bus schedule in the van and trailer. And I was like, this is even worse. So I was like, <laughs> I gotta find the right yeah. the yeah. right situation <laughs> here. Yeah. So it's called staying home and doing a bunch of projects that you can get <laughs> at home, and then just bringing out a keyboard for uh, Fight Fear Your Death Punch and Chord and playing a bunch of cool stadiums. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like you figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One USB plug. <laughs> you figured it out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Quicker sure. than some. Quicker than some. Life hacks. What are some <laughs> artists that you want to work with, if you could, if you had your way? Um, for me, I, I, I think it would be like, I don't know, like Kanye, <laughs> The Weeknd, um, Dua Lipa, you know. Fuck I, yeah, dude. Dua yeah. Lipa. Yeah. Um, She's awesome. Cascade, She's John the Summit. In the world. Fred oh, again. Oh, okay. You know. 
He's yeah. putting it out there. John Summer. Newly crazy. single Bobby, uh, the uh, hopeless good. romantic, is throwing it out there. That <laughs> Man, you fucked Dua Lipa up, though. She got to write a track about you, though. I'd be so, honest. Kind of, that's kind of dope. That's awesome. Yeah, that's dope. I yeah. never understood that. When everyone was talking about that, with, there was always the same thing with Taylor, right? Yeah, like true. You date her, you're going to get... I'm like... That's, that's great. awesome. My relationship yeah. with her is going to live in infamy? Yeah, that's, that's true. That's fucking sick. That's you depends on scenario. what she's saying, though. Whatever. Yeah, true. Everyone, what, like you walk away from a relationship and you think that the chick isn't going off and saying something anyway? No, I don't think my ex is at all, dude. I think my ex is saying how great I was. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're still together. I am not together. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, man. You can't let me go back, John. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, this is like an intervention. This is like therapy yeah, intervention yeah. session. We just you wanted know? to have it on video so I you got had to you. look back at it. Okay, got it. Every time and be like, just this part of the clip. I got it. Not coming I got back. It. Not Never coming again. Back. Got it. Dude. Never again. Yeah, I mean, we started a whole project because of our exes. Like, <laughs> so, you know, it's just cool an impact. To have an outlet to put shit into, you know, and have fun while doing it too, you know. So, yeah. I mean, like nothing against the the metal or rock world, but I'm I'm more interested in like bridging genres and and I've I've always listened to everything, you know. Like mm -hmm. I grew up on like '90s hip hop, and then I'd listen to Cannibal Corpse and you know uh, Tool and Corn, like or MXPX. So like I, I'm just into any. Yeah, I love songwriting, so, so I I love the idea of like disregarding like uh, genre elitism or you know just pigeonholing and. Uh, you know, just just creating music with somebody like um, one of my favorite R and B artists is They, and uh, our our creative director is really close with them. So I'm like, all right, I want to do like a house track with these really smooth R and B vocals over it, and like some darker elements, you know, and just yeah. kind of you know, see where it goes. Like, I think that's the key right now too. Um, there's been blending of genres over time, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But I found new projects like yourself. Uh, newer, sorry, um, and some others that are out there that are coming up. You're hearing a really good blend of these different genres. Oh yeah, and it's usually about four to six of them now. Whereas before it was like, let's see if we can, you know, back in our day it was. <laughs> that sounds so fucking old. Back in our day, just I don't know why that slipped out. Uh, but you know, like when we were growing up, it was it was like, can we mix rock and rap? Oh my god! Oh yeah, and that was like the crazy thing. And now yeah. you got like genres that are going through four to six, like I said, that are, and it's not just for the purpose of doing them. Like each part is actually serving a purpose to the song and making it yeah. more interesting, rather than just being like, oh, I'm just gonna throw in this random part. Like it was fun when we were kids writing a punk rock song, and then all of a sudden you went into a reggae part, whatever. You know, right. you're like. But did it really service the song? Who knows? Now it seems like there's a, enough artists out there that are really wrapping their heads around the theatrics mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and telling a story through a song or an yeah. album. And like I Kim Dracula. Really cool. he's, he's Kim Dracula is perfect yeah, example. Great. Yeah. He's great. Perfect example of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember uh, old Between the Buried and Me? They would go through like They'd have like a butt rock section yeah. and then like a prog rock section. Now they're like so talented, bro. Yeah, Holy shit. Mm -hmm. But before they really like kind of went the the elite musician angle, like they were yeah. just kind of having fun, you know, and just like it's like tech metal, like yeah. kind of vibe, huh? which is great too, and, yeah. and and it's fun to listen to. But I'm saying like it's gotten better. It, they've always been. Ever, there's been a lot of artists that have been able to to bridge these gaps musically because you can do that, you, you know. But to my point, to my point is, it's when I say serve a purpose, I mean more for the songwriting, yes. the the, like I said, the story, the journey that's right. you're supposed to be going right. on. Like if you're going into a part that's supposed to make you a certain, feel a certain way, and all you've got is an acoustic guitar to do that, or a clean guitar, if you're writing hard rock and you're like, oh, I want a change of uh, of scene, I'm going to put clean guitar and some violins behind it. So yeah. that was how you changed the scene before. Right. Now you have so many, now there's so yeah. many more options. There's always that cool moment too, like um, I'll use Sleep Token for an example. Like now people are have them on their Great. radar. Yeah, and they're like, oh, I, I like this. And it's like, it took that like genty, heavy breakdown for, you know, 16 bars at the end for them to realize they also appreciate the very soft, like R&B kind of jazzy beginning of the track. But that was like the, the trick, like, oh, here's a heavy guitar. I'm going to listen to it and take it seriously. And then they're like, oh, I'm a fan of this now. And that leads into them liking The Weeknd or Daft Punk, you know, and just it's kind of cool to see that moment happen where someone opens their horizons because, you know, one thing that they were familiar with kind of baited them in and they're just like, OK, like I can appreciate this now. You know, yeah. that's, that's a cool moment. So I, yeah. I enjoy trying to do that as well. We have a, a track that's going to be on our EP that um, 
it starts out almost very like just smooth house music and then it goes into a whole segment and like drop f you know with like this very like super heavy it's yeah kind of like chester bennington type sing screaming architects you know if you will and uh i, I think that'll be a cool moment because people are going to it makes sense like it's not abrasive you know it just like it works but you never would think you'd hear house going into something like that so yeah i'm i'm, I'm excited to see how like people yeah. respond to that one and it's a vibe. That's awesome, man. I can't wait to hear the rest of the shit, by the way. Yeah, I'll we'll have to send yeah. you the, the private link. I think you yeah. dig it. I think yeah. you fuck with it. Yeah. Yeah. Make you feel some type of way, you know? Some type of way. <laughs> you're going to feel something. You're going to feel something. You're going to feel something. You're going to feel something, dude. Yeah. You're feel well, let's, it. Get, let, let's go back to the, uh, um, the, the synthetic of Ordinary. Well, let's go back to the synthetic of Ordinary. I listened to it. Uh, a lot of the elements that are, you know, you're, you're taking the stems of everything that we did in the studio. I loved... Love, love, love for my personal take as the bass player. Your low end take on stuff. Like oh, when you're going you. to the to the synth bass on it. Yeah. Uh, dropping down further and further into the octaves on it. Yeah. I thought it was a really cool, cool way Thanks, of, of bringing it together. Like when you were, you talked a little bit about the visuals of what you were going through when you were driving through PCH and stuff like that. But when you sat down and start really constructing this, uh, what were some of the things that you were stoked about, some of the things you listened to, maybe some stuff that you were like, it wasn't working, but I wanted to try it? Um, I, I actually started on a, another track from the album, but that track doesn't stay within the same um, time signature and BPM. So I, I was really struggling with that. So What was the other song? I'm trying to remember which track it was. It's Dancing in the Wind. Oh, uh, uh, Cosmic. Cosmic, yes. Okay, thank you. No, no yeah, worries. Cosmic. And then, uh, so when I went over to Ordinary, I was like, okay, this is this is locked in on the BPM. That's a little bit easier to work with. I feel like Synthwave has like certain elements that you've got your ARPs, you got your bass, you know, especially the dun 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 type basses. Um, and it's then, a dancey song. Yeah, yeah, it's really dancey. Actually, the only revision note I got from Sin was to keep the bass line closer to the notes you were playing. Mm. So that's that's where I went and reconstructed that to make sure it was more true to the original. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I just wanted it to like kind of travel and then by the end just open up to this big epic thing. I feel like you guys were really conservative on the mix for the album. Like you know, there's nothing that's really just like super loud and glaring it's, it's a very like nice mix it just sits in the pocket so i wanted to like turn the drums up to like 11 and just have them hit real hard in the end you know and kind of bring in this epic climax i, I always picture like like tokyo at night or you know like a lot of people <laughs> like the movie drive i like blade runner so i'm just thinking like you know it's the end of the film everything's falling apart the the girl you love got shot she's dead you know you got so you just <laughs> you, you got dark go, with it bro yeah you, you got, got dark go dark with it why is it so. all dark love with you guys it's all, it's all, it's it's kicking all babies and strollers and babies shit and hey, that's babies that's babies that's 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 that because it's all we've ever known i'm just kidding uh, we yeah. just found out that Davey was kicked as a baby. Well, I didn't want to say it, but... <laughs> we just talked about yeah. breaking the cycle, my oh. friend. Just because you I'm were kicked doesn't mean you kick somebody else, yeah. all right? No, that's true. Sometimes. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... No, I mean, actually, it, there wasn't a, a big challenge with it. I, I came into it so excited and so happy to do it that it just... It was like... I was just having fun. I was sitting there. I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm, okay, I'm going to add some more synth lines. And then uh, I, I sat on it for like a day or two and I was like, okay, I'm going to send this to the guys. Like, I think, I think they'll like it. So uh, thankfully you guys liked it. And yeah, thankfully out. everybody else liked it until I saw, I saw it on Instagram. You heard of, you heard of Dave of the release? You heard I of said Dave? that at the beginning of this podcast. You heard oh. of Dave of the release? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, you know, but that's, you know, that, there's nothing for me to do there, let's be honest. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, I, I heard it after that. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I heard that uh, there's some stuff being happening, but it wasn't until I saw the post that I was like, oh, that's what everyone yeah. was talking about. I didn't realize it was you. I didn't realize there was what was happening and everything like that, which is, I know, that might sound crazy to people, but like... It's, no, it's, it's so easy for that to happen because there's so much going on. It's so like moving parts. you can't... Yeah. Somebody needs an and answer honestly, real quick. because your friend would be the reason why I would know anything about a synthetic. People can go out and do a synthetic if they want. With that, you know what yeah. I mean? Like you could... You wouldn't have the stems, but you can go out and do your own edits, you know, like, yeah. so 
the difference is, is that we know you and, and, and it's fucking liked it. So <laughs> I made the art too, that the cover art for it. That's Dude, I made that. By the way, that artwork is sick. I love Thank the artwork you. on your, uh, your album for this too. Thanks. It's very mm-hmm. Blade Runner meets pur- Purple Rain. Yeah. That's, that's always that's the goal. Life, <laughs> that's yeah. it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Very cool stuff, man. Thank you. Well, shit guys. Thank you guys for being here for the 200th episode. Thanks for having us. Congrats, dude, on yeah, 200, man. People don't. I just realized, though, as I'm talking to you, Bobby, there's too much cheetah print here. I don't know if we could put, release the video. We I wore this hat. hat. I wore this hat today. We got, oh, that's giraffe over there. I knew you were going to wear that, so I wanted to match you. You know that I wore this jacket without the pants mm. when we did an episode at your house years ago. We just did the audio only. See what I'm saying? A lot, of, a lot of people don't know this whole wall is green screen, and you were yeah. wearing green earlier, but you were... I and he doesn't usually wear it. pants, yeah. so... That part is true. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, bro. But congrats on 200 episodes, man. It's yeah, just it's hard, dude. Like, congrats, like, for real. Like, it's just it's such a easy. cool show. It's not easy. Yeah, we enjoy doing it. We enjoy having conversations with the... It's awesome, Guys are yourself, friends, of course, too. Yeah. You know, like, that's... That's what it's all about, just being able to hang and have a beer while I stare at my friends we, who want to I want to come on like in the future and we should smoke PCP for an episode and try it. Yes. Dude, I'll, I mean, it will call, it'll be an educational episode. I love like, 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 it. It won't be, yeah, well, we got to show what the <laughs> downsides are. Uh, no, but no, I'd love to, I would love to do a smoke craft let's, episode. Let's fucking do one, bro. Only smoke craft. Let's do it. I've fallen back in love with weed. Uh, over the last Why don't I just years? bring over a bunch of weed and we just smoke a bunch? Let's get, let's see. Bro, we got to bring and Dusty we, on though. Hold up. And you watch old videos of something. Chris yeah. commentary bro, or something. Bro, there's no motherfucker like Dusty, bro. He has the craziest tolerance, bro. He can yeah. drink legit like 2,000 milligrams. I mean, he gets fucking floored, but he's fine. He's it's been freebasing black tar heroin this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know Is what that he, what you were doing over there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> But for real though, let's do an episode. Let's get fucking real. I would love to do a smoke craft episode. I know uh, we didn't plug too much of this real quick, but we're going to uh, smoke craft, smoke black black craft, craft. smoke black craft. Sorry, Um, you still you you have the podcast, obviously. Yeah, yeah, we're just going through seasons. Are you still doing Twitch? I'm not doing Twitch anymore. Um, I'm actually with a new company now called Roadhounds. It's actually kind of cool. They built very what you guys do. They built like a meta. Uh, They built like this rock. Basically, like a Grand Theft Auto world. It's kind of crazy. Sick. It's just rock based, you know. So we stream in there right now. But uh, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of burnt on streaming, dude. I'm kind of. I had a good run with Twitch for three years. We did it. We had a great run. We I had mean, a crazy you guys, run. You guys did so well. Bro, we had a crazy uh, I will run. say, pairing with uh, uh, Danny Wimmer too. Yeah, you it was guys great. Had, you had Spacey before that. Yeah. And then it, you, when she poured with Danny Wimmer, yeah. uh, or poured or collaborated with Danny Wimmer on it. It, went. it was the perfect timing, too, because of everything that was going on in 2020 and mm-hmm. 2021. Um, and then you guys were able to go out there to the festivals. I thought that was really cool. Yep. Had Matt Penfield and a bunch of other people. Matt involved. Penfield's the best human being on this. Fu- have you got him on the show? I haven't. No. How do you not have Matt Pinfield on the show? We don't cross a lot of a lot of paths, but Sam, I need to connect Sam, you guys. Sam, people. Sam, Matt Penfield cool. is like a brother to me. I love that guy so much. Like. I've had the pleasure of meeting him and He's, passing a couple times. He's bro, a very nice guy. I know. Best human being on this planet. Yeah. The world does not deserve Matt Pinfield. You've got to bring him on the show, dude. Like, I just, I just feel inferior to him in the sense of like the, <laughs> his musical knowledge. Like, bro, it's insane. Like, like he, he's an encyclopedia, man. Like, yeah, it's dude. fucking. I, I'd feel very intimidated because that he would probably bring up something, looking at me just like intensely, being like, "Not at all." You know bro. who I'm talking about? And I'd be like, <laughs> "I have just zero idea." Not at all, bro. <laughs> Matt is the no, best. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't mean it. In I, a I, bad know way. Mean, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. He wouldn't mean it in a bad way. Uh, but like, it, for me, like my, uh, my, my, my perception would be like, yeah. "Oh shit, I should know this." Um, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. You got to bring him on, though. I'd love to. You got to have Matt Pinfield on the show. Matt, come it on up. over the show. Always, uh, you know, open invitation. Hell yeah. But uh, yeah, dude, fucking so cool that Thanks you guys. Us, I mean, this is actually. I, I just now realizing this too. God, it takes me way too long to know this shit. But like, this is two different friendships that have that I have in my life coming together in a different yeah. way. Yeah. Which is really fucking cool, and uh, really universe. excited to, to see how it, how it keeps going and shit, man. It's gonna be Thanks, really man. fucking cool. Thank you, you down to play bass live with us. Sure, there it is. Sick. We got it. Yeah, that's sick. That's One of these cameras got that shit. That's sick. Yeah, I mean, I, that's an open ended thing, right? <laughs> <laughs>
Fuck, man. <laughs> no, I'd love to, man. I'd do anything with my friends. That'd be fucking, fucking super fun. Well, so, yeah, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, I appreciate you, Thank too. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Yeah, is there anything uh, you guys else want to want to plug? Let's drop a Let's drop a Blackcraft promo code. Okay. Let's do uh, PCP. Use code PCP. No, I can't do that, actually. Well, why not? Why not? PCP catering. You want to? Why can't you do PCP? I don't know. Yeah, dude. Let's do... People carrying people. True. No, let's promo do... Uh, <laughs> promo code. Let's do drinks. <laughs> for drinks promo with Johnny. Code drinks. Drinks promo with Johnny. Drinks. Let's do... What do you want to do? 30 or 40% off? Hey, it's your company, man. Don't, don't, don't put me in this. You run it. What do you want to do? 30 or 40%? <laughs> Come on, let's give the people 40% off then. All right, let's do it. 40% off with, with code drinks. Code check drinks. Out. For a limited time. Let's do, uh, let's do it for like 72 hours. 72 hours from, the, from when this episode drops. From when this episode drops. All right, so if you're watching this right now, use promo code drinks at blackcraft.com. You give yourself 40% off. I like that. Yeah, and if you're watching it after the 72 hours, you're shit out of luck. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, on the podcast side, I'd like to play one of your guys' tracks, if you don't mind, on the Fuck way yeah. out. Fuck yeah. uh, I can't that. do it on YouTube. You guys understand the licensing yeah. on that. But yeah. uh, on podcast side, which one would you guys like me to play? Because you could send me in. Should, we, should we give a little sneak peek of a new track? Tears. Fuck yeah, yeah. tears. Let's do tears. Tears, tears lost, lost some time. time. Dude, All shit right. goes like crazy. We'll talk about it. What is this song about? Tears lost in time. <laughs> oh, tears, tears lost in time. Actually, oh, that's a that's a crazy story too. Yeah, Should ahead, I, do we have time? Can I tell yeah, we got, hey, you, we got all. Honestly, you guys were the ones that said you got other shit going on. I'm already drinking beer at one o'clock in the afternoon. I ain't oh, got good. shit. Oh good. Okay. I, got, I got to fucking edit this and put it out tomorrow. That's what all I got. Right, I right. feel like this. And as a matter of fact, if we're gonna tell another story. Yeah. Sam, can I get another beer? Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah it this is, hey, I'm gonna grab some water. See that? Can we, can we drink this on air with the label oh, on dude. it? Oh, dude. You can do yeah, what the fuck course. you want, dude. Right. We're just talking about smoking PCP, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what kind of show do you think you're on here? I'm trying to wet my whistle. Yeah. No, I always, want, dude, that's, a, that's an interesting question, though, because I always got that, like, when, we'll get to your story here in one, real, real second. Uh, real second? Real second. second. I'm another in one, a real bro. second, another not a fake one. one. <laughs> Uh, but no, like I always found that funny oh. when we were doing like music videos and stuff too. They were like, don't wear any shirts with, uh, you yeah. know, any labels on it or anything oh, like yeah. that. You could actually probably help me understand this a little bit better because on the YouTube side, the people ask the same questions. Like, can you, can I put something out there that has a label on it? I've never once not put anything out with a label on it and never had any flack because I don't. Thank you so much, buddy. Do you not monetize? You, Sam. No, we do. Uh, huh. but... If you, I believe if you're not specifically selling that item, I don't I don't think they have any leg to stand on. Okay, it's my yeah. understanding. I don't just, know. People put my shit in movies and shit all the time. We were just watching a horror movie the other night, and I saw Blackcraft in it. I was like, "What the fuck? That's sick as fuck." Well. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Dude, by the well, way. Actually, what movie was it? Uh, do you remember the name of it? I don't. I can't remember. I'll, I'll fucking let you know. It was a, it was a sick horror movie though. Um, they were in Blackcraft all over their jackets and shit. It was crazy. Rad. But when I was on the reality show Total Divas. Um, I remember, like, I was wearing Blackcraft a lot, like, on the show, because, you know, like, I was just rocking it. And um, then I fucking saw we were in the WWE video game. Like, Blackcraft was, like, if you go create a player, you could put black my Blackcraft art on the player. What? I was like... Okay, first of all, that's amazing. It's cool. the coolest thing in the world. But then you got to think about it as the guy running the show. Yeah, but, just, yeah but, but I'm like, just, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, this good. is sick that's as good. fuck. This is going to help my brand. <laughs> this is sick as fuck. Yeah. Right. And I was like... Hey, just a quick question. Not that I even give a fuck. I'm just grateful that you guys, this is cool. I'm not bitching at all, but like, how is that legal? And they're like, well, didn't you read the paperwork you signed about Blackcraft? I was like, oh, I never read any document. I just yeah. signed it. What the fuck reads documents, bro? Like, yeah. do you read shit? I don't read shit. I, I read like... Always. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm not reading Dude. shit, bro. I um, read, I read, uh, I, well... Fuck it. So I have the, I, this will sound bad because I have... I have the privilege of, of a team around me for when it comes to legal, legal stuff. So, like, right. I read bullet points. Yeah, know. but that's but that's what you pay them to do, though. Help yeah, you right, break right, it right. down for you. No, and, I've had, and I've been lucky enough and fortunate, everyone, enough, and I said lucky, too, in there a couple times, uh, that yeah. uh, I've had that since I was 18 years old. So it's fair. I, I haven't had to worry about it too much yet. And then... We, we started out, Sam, when we started the show, we used to get uh, uh, releases. releases. Because I thought like that was the thing to do from doing it on the other side of stuff, and then 
I think it was Brad and Adam Ray that came over and we asked them to sign. They're like, you guys get people to sign? They had been doing podcasts for years. And I was like, yeah, like, we just want to make sure that because we're doing video and stuff. They're like, yeah, I don't think you need to do that. And then we found out <laughs> later, like, you don't need to do that at all. Like, yeah. Like, we, I, I, like uh, I can put out whatever the fuck I want of you guys saying whatever the fuck I want. Do it. Do did, an edit where I... <laughs> did you guys know, so Diary of a Wimpy Kid, they has a Avenged shirt on, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is a kid's thing. Do you guys know about that before? You were like, oh, I didn't it. know about it, I mean, probably years after it yeah. already came out. I think my, my sister-in-law was watching it with my <laughs> nephew, and she's like, did you, hey, I just saw this. And she sent me a, a screenshot of her watching it with her son. Uh, when they was like four or five or whatever, yeah. he's twelve or thirteen now. He's thirteen. I know this. I know this, Isaac. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, he, she was the first one that sent me that that screenshot of him wearing. It was the classic Avenged Sevenfold Death Bat one. I so mean, sick. I, I, and I, I don't get why that. Yeah, I've never understood why that would be a problem. Because I don't know why either. Every production has a department to clear that type yeah, of stuff. Clear. Like, I, I've managed the contestants on The Voice for, like, six seasons, and we'd have to tear the labels off our water bottles because sometimes we'd be on camera. Oh, yeah, Do you think that's them. a different thing in broadcasting, though? Because I you think have, so. Because you have the, we, the we want ads. money to be on our brand, so don't give yeah. anybody free stuff, I wonder. Yeah. Maybe there's a little yeah. bit of that. I think there's got to be a little bit of both because you also think about the structure to keep the value of broadcasting is different. I mean, and it's a For little sure. old school now, but the, the structure of it is you get that ad revenue uh, to the channel, to the to the company, and then it get like, I, I would imagine that you'd have to get it pre-approved on a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do on The Voice? Uh, so we, we would uh, just kind of take the contestants through their days. Like, it, I kind of had a, a leg up on everybody because I performed and did shows and everything. And I think a couple of, I was playing for a band called Winds of Plague at the time, and I think a couple of the contestants had my stuff in there, in their, like, iTunes or whatever, which was kind of cool. But, yeah, just run through their vocal warm-ups with them, make sure they're on stage on time. We take them to Pharrell Studio or uh, iTunes Henson Studios and make sure they're just they're cool, you know, like kind of kind of like a stage managing second assistant director type work, but a little bit more personal and like so it was just myself and like three other people and we would just like yeah make sure that they made it through the whole day's production and didn't lose their minds and then, you know, sneak out of their hotel and go on like a drug bender somewhere in, <laughs> in Hollywood. What the but fuck? That's a true story. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is it a true story that you had to watch out for that or that that happened? That happened, yeah. From The Voice? Yeah. One of the contestants? Yeah. Went on drug bender? Yeah. I thought the whole point of The Voice was to give someone an opportunity that would never have that opportunity before, so they took that opportunity and did that. Yeah, so there was uh, interesting. There was contestants that they would like. Damn it, Kelly Clarkson! I know you're super popular now. No, she's, she, like, no she's, she's not American. American Idol. Idol. Same, same shit. No, I just wanted to say Kelly Clarkson because I think she's doing great. No, they she's would have like awesome like mass shit. auditions, and then they would have people that they saw on YouTube that they were like, we want we want this this year, you know, like we want a good country singer. So they would handpick that audition. That would be a separate private one in uh, in Burbank at uh, Center Staging. Okay. Yeah, and. Uh, so they would come in and they would like handpick. So they got this this one dude. And I think he he sang for like uh, Seether or something like that. He filled in at some time or Seether or Saliva, one of those bands. And uh, he had a problem with drugs. And so his whole thing was like, all right, make sure you know he doesn't leave the hotel and go on a bender. Like, and sure enough, one night he slips out and does it. The next day on the show, he's getting kicked off, and they had to like develop this whole story around it. And Pharrell like didn't like him since the start, you know. So uh, he gets on there and they're just like, yeah, like you're just your attitude and this and that. And it's like, no, no, really. He snuck out and did a bunch of heroin and showed up late. <laughs> oh, but, you know, so yeah. any of you fans of The Voice, we don't have to say the name. You could go back and see exactly who he's talking about. <laughs> I got all the data. True. I didn't have to sign NDAs, so I'm yeah. good. I can, I can spill you it. You didn't have to sign any NDAs on that, huh? No, huh? That's crazy. I That's have. surprising. Yeah, sure? because you, you got a lot document? of... I swear, I, I, I'm going to write a book one day. I have so many crazy stories. Was there a lot of crazy stories being on that set? Yeah, there was a good amount. It was. I can imagine because it's a pretty giant production. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. Like I love Universal Backlot. And so. I, I imagine you don't want to. We're not going to throw anyone completely under the bus. Anything from like the judges or hosts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I shouldn't talk about it. You should leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah, yeah. We'll leave it there. there. I mean, get the guy, for all of you who might just be like, oh, that's such a cop out, whatever. 
people still have lives and businesses to, to fucking deal with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have no ill will towards the show, and they had a great yeah, experience. Yeah. That that was my attempt to take time off the exhaustion of touring, and then that's during that phase. I, I oh, you you said writer the right job, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I went into like sixteen hour days babysitting, basically. Yeah, I'm going to take time you know. off the road to do a reality TV show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that was you have a little taste of that too. Yeah, fuck yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Fuck <laughs> exactly. reality TV shit, but, uh, That's what you guys need. You need the uh, the reality TV show for you guys. Yeah. I'm staying away from all reality TV <laughs> chicks, right. shows, everything, bro. He says I'm that I'm over now. three. He says that now. I, I I'm over three with reality oh, chicks. Oh, I know. That's Actually, I'm over four. Is it four now? I'm over four it with reality chicks. It counts up to chicks. four. Yeah. I want, I want everyone, if you're watching four. this or listening to this, you could just put it in the ratings if you're listening to it. I want to <laughs> know, over and under, Bobby ends up with another... Uh, reality TV, TV stuff. Man, I've been talking to one right now, actually. Like, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah? <laughs> that fool likes to be right, fire, so, like, bro. You guys, you guys gonna, <laughs> so is anyone going to actually take the under? <laughs> <laughs> Something about reality star chicks, man. They got Something a vibe to them, you know? Yeah, they have that kind of narcissistic selfish. Call me out for it, woman. Shit, bro, you said that shit, not me. You said that shit, not me. I tread lightly. Oh. Did you fall in love when you saw what the ex-husband's birthday present was? Is that what it was that oh. attracted you? <laughs> what is no. Wait, wait, what was no. this? No. Um, what did Sam just bring up? Yeah, oh, shit. Just... <laughs> the stacks of vagina shit, you mean? Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> No, he went up that. He bought an entire sex store for her. Yeah, oh, that's true. I did. I did. <laughs> I did actually. I bought her a sex. Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> not just a not just a toy. Shit. A store. A store. <laughs> yeah. It's like the uh, the spice. So you got fucked in coffee shop all the way around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got fucked. I got fucked. Oh, oh, just like a spike. Yeah. yeah. Was Latte it, uh, Larry's? Latte Larry's, and yeah. the other one is uh, Mocha Joe's. Mocha Joe's. That's Mocha so Joe's. funny, bro. So good. Incredible. Nah. I haven't started the new season. Have you started oh, the new season? Yeah. Of what? Curb? There's a new season? Brand yeah. new season. It's a final, season. season. It's final season. No, when did it come That's out? That's why I'm waiting. It just came out like a month or two ago. Curb's yeah, it's unbelievable. Ever. I love the show, but every time, like, my, I, I don't have anyone else in the house. I have a seven year old and a wife, and it's not her cup of tea comedy wise. It's the best yeah. show in the world. And it's amazing, yeah. of course. It's the best. Uh, so I got to watch it at certain, like, certain times, and mm. I just, every time I've been wanting to watch it, it's been the end of the night, and I'm like, I want to be a present, and I'm like, I'm too big yeah. right now. Like, yeah. I'm just too high right now. Like, yeah. it's great to watch it high. Don't get me wrong, it's fucking hilarious. But yeah. I'm like, I want to retain this. Yeah, yeah. 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 these yeah. The three episodes I've seen so far have oh, so wait. much going on that you really have to be like, I was distracted watching the anything third. in its final epi- in its final season starts to go into that. Direction. Yeah, it's, it's, over. it's off to yeah. a crazy so, start. It's brutal. But you know, Larry David's going to do something else. He's going to bring Seinfeld I back. Hope so, I heard. I just want more. No. Curb. Yeah, Salman, Salman, Salman Laguna, he's telling me that. If they bring Seinfeld back with the Curb vibe, because that's always yeah. what he wanted yep. was, you know, they, they did it for NBC. He was George, right? Yeah, he was he George. Was George, yeah. But you could tell, like, I mean, I'm sure, the you know, Jerry would, would have probably been on board, too, but, like, they're both comedians and stuff. Like, yeah. I don't know everybody, but, like, I, I would assume they had to quell a lot of their taboo humor. Yeah. To yeah, of be course, they're okay sick for, for NBC. That's why the curb, right? It was like yeah, the, the curb was like the antithesis of that. So, I would see a Seinfeld coming back would be massive if they can incorporate that. Uh, a little more like, uh, but still have the original cast. I think that'd be really that'd be really dope. That'd be yeah. crazy. Or you know, what would be brilliant is you know how he's been putting on this show in, in Curb Your Enthusiasm, where he had to cast that girl because he was being blackmailed. Oh uh, God! Young when he was doing the reunion, I yeah, think it was season seven, <laughs> yeah. I, if he actually turned that into a real show, like Ugh. that would be pretty genius. Pretty like, just coming from there, the same what actress. What if you were able to somehow do both? Like you have like the real sitcom that's kind of like Kirby and does those. It's the original cast. You go, you go a little bit more raunchy with it, right? Because you can put it on streaming. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. And then like every week you have the follow up of what's quote unquote behind the scenes, but it's more of them acting with like weird shit like that happening. Yeah, Maria Sophia and all that, like incredible. Like a companion piece. <laughs> companion yeah, piece cool. would be kind of cool. Be fire. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Call me up, Larry. I'll help you out. Shit, he's here in OC. I see him. He's in OC now? No, he stays at the montage a lot. I see him there uh, all the time. <laughs> Just the montage when he's in OC. 
Where the fuck else you gonna be? Where the fuck it else is, it is. All right, before we went off on a tangent, right. though. Yeah, this show's got to oh, be Davey had a story that he's like, he wanted oh, yeah. to know if we had enough time for it. Tears, tears lost in time. All right. Tears That's lost right. in so, time, let's go. So we're going to play you that track. It's un- it won't be released for a little while. But, uh, yeah, so Bobby and I were, were at his place, and we were kind of just going over some things, uh, looking at merch, doing photo shoot stuff, and... Um, we were working on this new track and, and the girl that sings on some of our stuff, Fry, was asking me for some inspiration, like lyrically. So I, oh, I, uh, I guess I texted just her. just catching up on this story. <laughs> oh, I don't know where he was going with this. So. That's what I mean. <laughs> I, for the record, like when it comes to writing lyrics, writing anything, like I'm really quick with it. Like it just comes out. So I, I texted her bro. all these paragraphs with lyrics. Everything's like lined up nicely. Bobby's, Bobby's having a smoke. I must have been so contact high when I sent it to her because um, we finished the track and, and we were in a group text and we're like, well, you know, are you stoked? Do you like it? And Fry's like, I just did what you wrote. And I was like, what do you mean what I wrote? And I completely forgot that I wrote the lyrics to this song. Like she sent me the, to the original text and I was like, well, I don't even remember. the lyrics to an entire song? Yeah. I was like, I, I don't even so remember sending high. this. I got them so high. <laughs> and that was uh, an ad for smokeblackcraft.com. <laughs> Thank you. That's if you perfect. want to forget your most brilliant writing, <laughs> become an idiot savant. <laughs> but, but the lyrics are incredible. But the lyrics are incredible. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, so you wrote them when I'm you were high. I impressed myself. Yeah. <laughs> what was the inspiration for the lyrics on this specific song? Um, I, I think the theme f- with this project is like just that narcissistic abuse side of like a bad breakup, the relationship when you're breaking up with somebody that just strings you along, love bombs you, and then just rips rips you out. You know. So uh, that was kind of the direction, like just kind of staying in that focus. Like there's a lot of synergy with everything we're doing. So the, yeah, the lyrics are kind of when you're waking up out of that haze of like, oh, I, I'm super in love with this chick. Oh wait, this chick sucks. Like, and you start to realize that you're, it's like waking up with a hangover. It's you know? like going it's like, from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. Sam, you've been married a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh shit! Wait, why do you laugh when he's like that? Why no, 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 no! Because hey, hey, hey! Let's, let, me, let me see where I'm going with this. Okay, okay, okay. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm just, I'm just. Uh, I, I, as he's saying, I've been married for a while too. As he's saying, like you wake up one day, you're like, do I really love this person? Do you ever have moments of that, Sam? I don't. You guys are gonna be sleeping on my fucking couch, bro. Dude, <laughs> Dude I got it. He I, answered it. He answered I've it correctly. I've been since I was nine. I'm one of the few that got lucky. That's cheesy as fuck. That was like, oh, I married my best friend. Oh, well, that's cheesy. A lot of guys are like, oh, that's lame. I'm like, dude. dude I married trying- my best friend too, and I've been with her since I was 19 as well. They're in an argument. When there's an argument that's been brewing for a couple of days, maybe, thought ever crossed your mind of what life was going to be like without that? Absolutely person. not. Hats off to you no, for I'm dating. Not, that sounds horrible. I'm not glorifying. I'm that saying, sounds I'm in the streets, bro. You're, 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 missing, <laughs> yeah, you're, missing, you're, you're missing what I'm, I'm asking. I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that I, to glorify the other side of it. I'm just saying, like, you prepare yourself, like, maybe it's something you did. Maybe it's something, regardless. I'm not your wife. Why are you talking to me about all this? Because she doesn't talk to me anymore. <laughs> Oh shit! Well, then you're gonna really. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to join the project. <laughs> 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 when Johnny Christ gets divorced, yeah. you're gonna fuck she, with you. She's me. She's really patient. Like, do you remember the night um, we were at Brian's for a Super Bowl party? Oh, I accidentally. No. Ate. I am terrified. For this, story. <laughs> this is a great. This is a great story. I accidentally ate shellfish. I ate a shrimp, and Michelle I'm was dead. like, "Oh my gosh!" She's like, "I have." Uh, I have Benadryl from like Mexico from one of their tours and I'm like, I'll take that. But like the dosage was like 10 times our Benadryl. So I pop it and this was before he redid his house so he had that like bench in the kitchen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, this stuff just knocks me out. I fall asleep on that bench. I wake up, it's like 2 a.m. Everyone's really drunk and you've gone home. And somebody was like, we're going to Johnny's right now and we're waking him up and I'm like, well, I think it was like Jason or, or Matt, but yeah, so I wake up out of this like Benadryl haze, and then we just start walking to your house to wake you up, and we're at the front <laughs> gate. And I think I think Lacey answers or something, and it's not happy. We can't get you up. Then finally, you like peek out. You're like, "What the fuck is going on?" And then finally, we, we just decided like, "What are we doing? This was a terrible idea." And, and leave and go back to Brian's. <laughs> Do you remember that, Johnny? No, I wasn't involved. Did you hear the story? <laughs> you said you woke up. I woke up and said, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I think every, everybody involved was shocked, but yeah. If, that, I had, if I had been more coherent, it probably would have been like, hey, what the fuck's going on? 
<laughs> you Are we drinking here? Are yeah, we drinking did. here now? Yeah. <laughs> that was a wild night. You'd have win. You'd yeah. win for sure. Yeah, I, so, somehow I always accidentally eat shellfish it, like with Michelle around. Like the next weekend was a party at, at Val's parents' house. How do you accidentally yeah. eat shellfish? I, so I ate a, a jalapeno popper that had bacon over the top with a toothpick through it. And I'm chewing it. I'm like, this tastes kind of weird. And I grabbed the next one. The toothpick falls out, and under the bacon <laughs> is a shrimp. It was like a, it was like I got microdosed a like hidden shrimpfish. A hidden shrimp, dude. Then then we're at get my chance for the hidden shrimps around the gate task. Yeah, it's terrible. The next party there was a, a salsa and I was eating chips and then I see like a piece of like lobster or crab float up. It was like a ceviche <laughs> with shellfish in it. I was like what the <laughs> so once again I'm like Michelle I need more. If you have Benadryl. a shellfish uh, problem uh, and you're gonna hang out with the gates, bring an epipen. Yes, that's more of that story. Lesson so. learned. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you guys again so much. Thank Remember, you, we're going to play you. that song for you guys on, on right. uh, the podcast side. So either listen to it over there or wait for it to release because this is before it's going to be released, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, like the world, world premiere. Yeah. World Johnny premiere here, baby. right here on Drinks with Johnny. Thank yeah. you guys like so much. Really thank appreciate you, it, man. And everyone go over and use that code at uh, blackcraft.com as well, that 40% code, Drinks. Drinks with um, And, uh, dude, this isn't the... First or last time we'll be having these kind of conversations. I'm gonna come out yeah. on tour. I'm gonna come see you guys in Pittsburgh. I'm gonna come out to yeah. the Pittsburgh date. Pittsburgh date's gonna be cool. Pittsburgh date's gonna be sick. Got, got some got some fam out there, so it's gonna be hell yeah. It's gonna be gonna be a vibe. Like you and, and and Brandon yeah. obviously. Yeah. So hell yeah. A few others. It's gonna be. I'm gonna bring my daughter out for her first like real rock show. You know. She's yeah, never been to one yet. She I took her to incarceration, but uh, she didn't stay to see bands or anything. So I want to bring her out for that. Oh, uh, that would be dope. Cool I'd be. I I. How old is she? She just turned eight. Perfect. So, yeah, she's all in music too, so I'm gonna bring her out. So, I'll see you there. I think I gotta come too. This sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. Gonna come on, have a history, brother. <laughs> We're gonna DJ the after party, bro. We're gonna DJ the after party. Yeah. yeah, sounds like a fucking plan. Let's figure that out. I'll bring PCP yeah. and let's do that. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. It'd be greater if you brought some regular smoke craft stuff. But I'll bring it. I will bring it. We got it. I'll bring all the drugs. Oh, by the way, you did say. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, the Delta stuff. Yep. You did with uh, Zachy. That yep. was fucking awesome. The shots were great. We've yeah. talked about it on this show. Uh, a filthy animal member, one of the paid members here, also one of our f- mutual friends, uh, Alessandro. Oh, yeah. Uh, you got sent. Uh, you got sent. You got sent. Right. He got sent. Well, in all, uh, in all fairness to this, uh, th- these droppers, Alessandro is all of 80 pounds soaking wet. Okay. And he hadn't smoked weed in years before that. <laughs> you can't, it's so it's a great. Combo. I heard the story and I wrote him to make sure he was good. I mean, it's weed, you know. I mean, what's, yeah, nothing's gonna, what's happen gonna happen. To happen. You, but, but I was like, bro, you never, if you haven't had weed in forever and shit. You shouldn't just shoot seventy five milligrams. Well, that was the other thing. I was like, the whole like, how <laughs> much? Seventy five milligrams. How much of the vial did you have? It says on the like read. Yeah. Okay, here, here's a lesson to you kids at home. Oh shit, because I don't read anything. But go <laughs> yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> this is a beautiful thing. Marijuana, THC, the stuff that's fucking great out there when you get older. Now has labels, and yeah, they true. actually have to say what's in it. You no longer have the problem that we had. True. Where you just guessed. Yep. Yeah, but how does that translate to someone new? Well, because... Who reads milligrams? Uh, But dude... Right, right, right. Okay, okay. In all fairness, I did tell a story when I was with Chris Van Vliet that I drank... My first experience drinking alcohol was sharing an entire fifth of vodka with my best friend at 12 years old. So, obviously, we didn't understand what this meant. So, basically, what I'll tell you right now... Five milligrams on an edible is about your, your, your regular dosage. Yeah. If you're a little, you know, timid... Two, two is going to be plenty for you um, to get started. Yeah, he shot 75 <laughs> right out of the gate. Yeah. And uh, he actually went to the ambulance that day. He did. He, he made, he <laughs> it's so funny when people go to the ambulance. I've had a conversation about this, Sam. Like, Bro, people who me, fucking... He made me the best smoke black craft ad ever. Yeah, that, that's the best thing you ever. can do. It's, uh, like, it's like he made this fucking funny-ass iPhone video where it was like, how it started, and he shot. Uh, he shot the shot, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like <laughs> he shot seventy five fucking milligrams because I didn't know what I was about to watch. And it's like how it ended, and he's being carried by two guys to like an ambulance thing. I'm like, "Oh shit!" We've Amazing. all been there, though. We've all been there. 
Incredible. Mm, yeah, please. but you've been there, but you don't go to the hospital because you no, realize it's weird. I mean, I'm very <laughs> high to the point where yeah. I thought those thoughts. Oh, yeah. But then I immediately like lay in just there go going like, yeah. just go to bed. You either go to bed or you watch something to calm yourself down, do whatever. I watch the roast of Dean Martin. That's what I do. Uh, oh, Dean, nice. Dean Martin roast That's that great. night coming. Dean really Martin awesome. roast? Uh, How have I never seen that? Bro, bro it's oh. one season. This is like 1975. It's got everyone on you it. want. Like, it's got the Rat like, Pack? Oh, everybody. It's insane. It's on Amazon. Highly recommended. It's on right, Amazon. We gotta Rickles this, is on it. Dude, we gotta bad. end this episode now because I gotta go watch this. Yep. I didn't even know you fucking <laughs> I gotta go pee. Yeah. I do too. Well, we'll keep the audio running for everybody. Hmm. So uh, I got a good stream. <laughs> stream of pee? I got a good solid stream of pee. Th- yeah. We're gonna pee clear because we've been drinking water. Yeah. How's so, your stream? Uh, also clear. No, also but is it sturdy? Like, is the stream good? Oh, Come on, man. Hey, you know, just real quick before we jump out of here real quick. I went on a date the other night with this chick, right? Okay. And uh, I was like, <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to tell that story. I was like, uh, I, can't, I can't tell that story. That story wait, 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 yes, you okay. can. No, I can't. That's for us <laughs> no, the no. after hour show. Um, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, you know I'm Bobby, you can't bring that up and not expect me to go to that. You know what's going to happen. Just, just hey, I, I, tell me a story and let, 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 right. me, let me bribe but, you. But real fast. Yeah. Probe. I did not know that... Penis injections are a real thing. What do you mean you didn't know they were yeah. real? Things? Like I know, like I hear, like what's uh, a penis like injection? Like stem cells? Yeah, stem cells. Yeah, I have a friend that does it. Wait, wait, yeah, wait. So yeah. this chick does oh, it. I didn't know about stem cells. No, Are you talking about just like no, 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 bro, no, bro. Shit. It makes your dick. It makes your dick like bigger. Okay, and it's just stem cells. It's just stem cells. Yeah. Should I get a promo code? Should we see if she wants to like forty percent off? <laughs> Black craft. So what does she inject? Stem cells. For? What do you mean? That's her job is to do yeah, it? Yeah, she owns it, the it, business. It, yeah, yeah. Oh. She owns the business. Yeah. This is the date that you went on. Yeah, she pumped my penis with the shit. Really? I, I, yeah. I you got know. dick stem cells? Yeah. You, you didn't tell me that. Whoa, 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 whoa. You went on a date. You went on a date with this girl. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, this is why you're not so he just played. Now he's playing because he just got called out and remember there's cameras around. No, bro. I brought this shit up. Okay, okay. So you went on this date, girl. Yeah. Find out her profession yeah. is jabbing a needle into penises. Well, it's much more than that. Much more. If you than put that. it that way, she owns this business up in Beverly Hills. It's a great business. So okay. I got a question: Are you less intimidated because the guy's needing that, or probably smaller, or is it intimidating? Oh, bro, I, don't, I I don't give a fuck about all that. I've shit. never had a problem. Uh, with yeah. That, so. Well, I mean, <laughs> well. I just, oh, watched, I, see what you're I just watched the the South Park episode last night. Like, yeah. It was from years ago. With all the anger issues coming from small penises, mm. like it was, <laughs> that's and Carmen that's all my is still anger. mad at the end of it. It's so good. Oh, that's, that's incredible. That's all my anger. Yeah, <laughs> not anymore, bro. You just got the injection. I won't know for another yeah, two months. Golden, we'll see yeah. how it goes. Is that how long it got takes? Those placental yeah. stem cells. Yeah. Okay, well, wait, but what did you did you inquire more about this? Because I want to. I, I, I did. Whole, I, right, I mean, but here's the problem, though. No, no, I don't mean to inquire for yourself. I mean, like, I would be just fucking. I never heard of that. Yeah. Inter- like, yeah. I mean, well, I stem cell research is, is fucking is, is been hot topic for the last I don't know eight ten years now. Like, and they've seen a lot of really good things with it. People yeah, are getting right. fucking joints fixed really yeah. well with it. You know. Yeah. Um, Makes but you again, more like, solid. Why does it? Why would it make you? Bigger is my question because it's usually stem oh. cells usually there call? to like fix stuff. It focuses the uh, the growth to that area. So my uh, my friend Natalie's a doctor and she does it. And we went we went to Zed's in his guest room. My she dad came date in with a girl and he's been dating one. I don't date Natalie. No. <laughs> she, she, that's too good. That's too good. Oh, that's she, so she hooked my dad up. She injected his knees oh. with stem cells and then she's like, she has <laughs> <"Wait>, which knee? <laughs> which knee? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so so I thought you were just, bro, that I've was never crazy. heard it referred to as a knee before, bro. bro. That was a hell of a lead. You never heard it. Really it really was. No, wait, you know what? Come on. We just don't have a can knee? of worms. Dude, you never heard it. She's got three clients weenie? in Newport. Like, come on. What, that gets the dick Yeah, thing? they get the dick thing. Newport Beach, she drives see, out here from L.A. See, the problem for with me with the chick, I really gotta go pee after this, all this dick talk, but... Is when they're injecting their dick with... Well, no, I was, I was like thinking, I can't inquire too much because this is my first date with this chick. She's gonna be, man, he got a really small penis. No, 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 no. She's got to hear that all the time. And also, she knows how to fix it. You think how she's worried about that? I don't know. She's like, she's like yeah. She's like, I, I'm going to worry about everything else first. If the guy's got a small dick, I yeah, can fix that. That might be her boot. I, but I get in my head because I was high as fuck, too. So I was really in my head. I was like, I bet you she's telling me this to test me. She's fishing. She's, 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 she's fishing to see. Because if I'm like, really? 
That's crazy. Well, what do I got to do? How much is it cost? Well, can we do it tonight? Like, like you got this shit? <laughs> then it's an issue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just played it cool. I was like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Who does that? That's crazy. What do you need that for? I went home. I was like, man, I need this shit. So <laughs> 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 I like what your friends should do. I'm going to do it first. Yeah, 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 Natalie, Natalie Scott, you do. No, no, no. Here's the, here's the reality, though. Like, even if you're fucking, you're, you're doing fine, you're like, could it be bigger? It's a performance enhancement. Well, you job. always want bigger. Do you, there's a point though. I do think that there's a point. You always yeah. want more money. You always want more downloads on songs. You want more merch sales. You that want, I will agree with. You but want dick size? I will. I will disagree with a really? little bit. Yeah, I, I think don't you know. Well, you must be good. I mean, if you if you, I, well, <laughs> been married a while. I was gonna say, <laughs> girls already struggle enough with you know. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. That's crazy. No <laughs> one's struggling, David. Come down. This show needs that. <laughs> <laughs> I've oh, seen enough porn and I know you too well. I'm dead. <laughs> I am dead, bro. We gotta end it. This is done. It's a wrap. No, no, but it, I know it does raise a question though, because like honestly, like it gets to a point. It has to be too big, right? Yeah. For the average girl, right? I mean, we're talking about like there's 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 the girls that can take it. Don't get me wrong, but we're talking about like the average girl. <laughs> Can you go balls deep if you're that that hung? I can't have this conversation. <laughs> this is a conversation. I can't. Crazy. I, can't. I, can't. I, I mean, don't understand why everyone's so nervous right now. Like, this is off brand for me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't talk about these things. <laughs> yeah, this is this is your wild. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the. This is the 200, episode. 200th episode. Drinks with Johnny. There we go. This is what we talk about now, guys. Mm. Uh, no, in all seriousness, thank you guys for being here. <laughs> thank you, really. Let's see if we go into another conversation. So, everyone, <laughs> would you? Well, let's ask the question. You keep saying, yeah. oh, thank you for being here. We go into another conversation. Yeah. Oh, it's the best. I this love is, it, bro. Oh, yeah, I love they, it. they know this. Like, if you've ever watched an episode, I you know it. I do this every time. I love it. Well, no, but the, the idea is, in all seriousness, is, is I like to, you know, make sure you all have an out. You know, my guests, my, everyone's having a good time. I love it, brother. But if we're going to keep fucking talking, I'm having a good time. I'm having a great time. I'm having Appreciate an amazing you. time. We're going to keep talking. They're going to stop listening. So I like it. I think, they, I think they all tuned out after we talked about penis injections anyway. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of guys right now Googling shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Stem cell. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't want any needles in my dick, bro. That's oof, you don't is. know. You don't know. <laughs> That's me. Yeah, there that means that means it's time to go, everybody. That the means alarm I gotta, oh, shit. That means I gotta get on a call. That means you gotta get on a call. Bobby's got a lot of stuff going on. You can follow him everywhere yeah. to see follow. how many things he's got going on. No, Bobby's got shit, though. What's that? Blackcraft. Smoke Blackcraft. Love Gone. Love Gone Music. And now I'm doing following versus merch side of things now, so that's been fun. But it's all it all speaks to each other. It all speaks to each other. It all I speaks to each other. No, no. But it's still a lot. Like it's let's a just, lot. Let's it's just, a just lot. put it that way. And, it's a lot. And like, it's a lot. Balancing a, 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 a lifestyle as well and having a child and uh, you know, I can't you know, happy birthday to Jordan. Thank you, man. Obviously. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah. And uh Davey, always great to see you, man. Always great, great to hang to see you. And, and have a little conversation. I can't wait to see more from this uh, project you guys got going okay, on, too, man. Thank you. Thank Everyone you. can follow Davey as well. All, Davey the, all the Damn Vampires is probably the best place to follow you right now. All or? the Damn Vampires official is the, the Instagram tag and on you know Spotify, all the DSPs, and uh, Davey Oberlin, same thing on all those. Same thing, yeah. Probably seen him on stage a few times, too, so keep following him. And uh, I guess that's it for today, guys. I'm sure we'll have another conversation in a couple of years when you guys got like 10 other projects going on. So <laughs> I like that. Appreciate you guys. All the, all, all the well Thank wishes and love to you guys. Wrap it awesome. up. They have to Thank pee. Come on. I do got to pee. <laughs> no, that's why I keep letting it go. <laughs> I'm just waiting until he stands up and says, fuck you. I want to piss on the couch. <laughs> It wouldn't be the first time. All right, anytime, uh, <laughs> fucking first time, last time, whatever. Thanks for tuning in. As always, we'll talk to you next time. Cheers. Cheers.